<laughs> that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> then what is this thing? Gio should never play for U.S. men's national team again because of the action of his parents. Because what an idiot! Oh, type of Muppet does this? Muppets, absolute Muppets. I, I'm not going to be the best person to give a whole explanation here, but that's. I can deal with. It. What are we really doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can agree with that. There are a zebra in between a tarantula and an elephant. Has been nothing more than a sham. Yeah, we didn't play well, but you know what? At the end of the day. We got the job done. It's going to be a good time for sure. Oh, sex with the first cousin would indeed be incest. And All by myself. Yes, welcome to the Straight Right Card. That was a tribute to Eric Carmen, who passed away yesterday. Um, pretty good songwriter. Not a big fan of his dirty dancing stuff. With that hmm. song on the dirty dancing soundtrack but that album from which all by myself came from um which was covered by like a thousand people i think the biggest one was uh what's her face and uh i can never remember her name i don't know why anyhow she covered all by myself great song a little sad quite a sad song but yes that was written by eric carmen may he rest in peace um, also hilarious uh, on, uh, I think it would have been Wednesday, Craig Burley, Craig Burley getting just going off. Celine Dion did cover it. Um, this is the gal um, known for her really, really, really high voice. Um, like she can hit like stuff and she has a, the Christmas song. Right, Gary. Thank you. God, why can't I ever remember her name? I don't know why. I just never have been able to remember her name. Hmm. Well, it's been worse now that I'm getting older. But she covered that as well. So a lot of people have covered All By Myself, which is, as I said, an extremely sad song. But Greg Burley just went off on ESPN on Wednesday because he came to work. They're supposed to watch Champions League, right? Hmm. And all the TVs in Building 3, where ESPN FC is, um, you know, where they are, they are, they didn't work. And he's like, so I had to watch the game on my phone. On my phone. And he said, if this were any other building, any other building in ESPN, it would take a 30-second call, boom, that would be in, and they would have fixed it. But no. Because we are ESPN FC and we are in building three somewhere in a hole, no one cared. Hmm. We ended up having to watch the matches on our phones. He said it was like watching little ants on my phone. How do you watch a game like that? <laughs> Who watches games on their phone? I mean, God, only peasants do that. <laughs> well, it wouldn't work for me because that'd be too small. I mean, I, I could do it on a, you know, on I watch, a pitch. I watch, iPod, I watch it on my phone. I watch it on iPads. I'll watch it on TV. Computer screens, whatever I can get my hands on. Right. I also want to clarify from all those folks who said that Jesse Marsh played two strikers all the time. He played mm -hmm. two strikers with Leeds all the time. Well, I went and looked it up. Out of the 37 matches Jesse Marsh coached for Leeds, he lined up with two strikers three times. Mm -hmm. Three. I can't even That's, name him. I couldn't name him either. And some of those lineups look really weird. So uh, they could have been cup games. I don't know. Yeah. Um, one of them was the Christ Christmas tree, uh, but except with two on the tip instead of one. Kind of weird. Hmm. Um, so anyhow, I'm glad we were correct. So we stand by what we said last show. Um, also, I couldn't remember the other disgusting song. Remember, we were talking about that one band who wrote that. So I want to put my hands all over you. So I want to touch you all over, over and over. Over yeah. and over. The, other over most, again. the other most disgusting song ever written is Hot Blooded. And we've, we've actually discussed this on the show before, many years ago. Foreigner. And, you know, it goes, hot blooded, check it and see. I don't know. You know the basic chorus. but Something, then, something, she's only 13? Yeah, and it turns out there's a whole um, <laughs> whole line about, well, anyhow, there's lots of gross 16, lyrics. right? Let me see. What is it? Uh, While you're looking that up, Fumar says Brett is on the set of Twister 2, a.k.a. Northern Indianapolis area. 
Yeah, okay. Might occasionally well, hear thunder and everything. You know? So here, here are the lyrics. Go for it. But you got to give me a sign. Come on, girl, some kind of sign. Tell me, are you hot, mama? You sure look that way to me. Are you old enough? Will you be ready when I call your bluff? What the f does that mean? That means, uh, are you old enough? And then they're going to be like, yeah, I'm 18. And he's going to call the bluff. And and then she's going to go, I'm lying, I'm 15. I'm sorry. <laughs> that probably. is just probably. ridiculous. And then, is my timing right? Did you save your love for me tonight? Mm -hmm. um, and then it goes to the next verse. Now it's up to you. We can we make a secret rendezvous? What an interesting way to squeeze rendezvous in a song. And oh, before we do, you'll have to get away from you know who. Her dad is my mom dad. and dad. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I, I was thinking her boyfriend, but now I'm thinking now she's like 13 years old. So she came to the foreigner con, uh, you know, uh, concert with her parents, and this sicko's hitting on her. All right. Well, anyhow, that's four. Yeah, I thought it was 16. Yeah. Oh, there was like, she's only 17, 17. Remember that one? That was a hit. We talked about that, yeah. Um, and then Ringo Starr's cover of You're 16, You're Beautiful, and You're Mine, All oh, Mine, All oh, Mine. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You're all peaches and green. Oh, what a dream. Lips like strawberry wine. You're 16, wah, wah. You're beautiful. In your mind, oh my, 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 yes. I'm scared you know the lyrics to this song. It's a really good song. It's a classic song. I think it was written mm. by Chubby Checker. I can't remember who actually wrote the original don't song. Don't the guy. <laughs> I don't think it was that big of a deal back then. I really mm. don't. I don't think 16 was thought of like, that's weird. Unless you were 30. Drinking age used to be 18 back in the day. I know. It's 18 when I was still alive. I remember... Going Good to times. my my Uncle Tom's wedding. And um, yes, my, I have an Uncle Tom. And he, uh, Uncle Kenny was there. I didn't even pay attention to what you said the first time until he brought up, yes, I've got one. Yes. And then Uncle Kenny. Eric's canceled again, guys. He was like 18 years old, my Uncle Kenny. He was the younger brother. He's drinking beer the whole time. Hmm. And then they, what happened is Michigan was the last state to change. And what they did at the federal level is... They told Michigan, if you don't raise it to 21, then we are going to take away your highway funding to repair your highways, and that's all going to go away. And that, of course, was also a big pressure wow. from uh, Moms Against uh, so, Matt. Is Matt. That why, uh, is that why 31, the 31 bypass just sort of stops at exit 22? <laughs> I don't know. It, it's completed now. It's completed. All you right. can take it all the way up and then jump on to uh, 95 and take that further up to Holland. They're, they're, they're safe now. They must have, yeah. they must have changed, it, changed it at some point. But, I mean, Michigan had a good argument. Their argument was, listen, if a mother is old enough to carry an M16 and go kill foreigners in Vietnam, he's allowed, He's old enough to drink a beer. Yeah. I mean, I mean it makes he's sense old enough to, to smoke. Me. He's old enough to smoke. Yeah. Old I mean, enough to kill somebody on foreign lands. Yeah. Well. Um, okay, so those were those things, and uh, please hit the turd up so I can get them off the screen. Oh, the turd in the background says, "I'm late. Welcome to the straight red card. I was just taking a massage while my wife gave me a head. I believe that's called a blumpkin. I believe it is called a blumpkin. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're taking. Yeah, absolutely is. Turd, tell me if you've ever heard this saying before. I was listening to somebody, and uh, they're American, and I'd never heard this said before. And I quote. All along, you find out your girl is getting her cheese slapped by another man. Her cheese slapped by another man. Never heard that mm. said like that. Her cheese slapped. But I'm going to use it from now on. Yes, I'm going to use it. I think it's a good good quote. Um, and last but not least, I have to bring this up, Brett, because <laughs> it annoys the hell out of me. All right? Yeah. You know that show, Finding Your Roots, on uh, PBS? Finding your roots, where they bring in no. celebrities and they take their DNA tests, and then they, you know, they go back through their whole history and sh all that jazz. Well, they had Bob Odenkirk on, and his great 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 grandfather fought in is a soldier in Napoleon's army. Okay, hmm. so I thought this guy that hosts the show was an actual historian, 
but he actually wasn't because then he went on to talk about oh yeah he he had to he, he was a soldier in that tyrant's army that horrible man's army the one that wanted to conquer the world and conquer europe hey you moron have you studied this at all how many coalitions were there seven coalitions of all the other countries basically not every time but most of the other countries in europe against france why because they were all kingdoms and they had kings and queens and the French just lopped their king's head off and they didn't think that was a good precedent to be set. So when he became uh, emperor, they didn't like that. They didn't like that. They didn't mm -hmm. like the whole precedent that you could kill the king and then put somebody else in power and then he would call himself the emperor. So even in the very first coalition, it was basically to stop France from being a republic. And if you want to call him a tyrant, fine. But all of Europe's laws, the Napoleonic Code, okay, was because Napoleon spread that. You know, everyone is the same under the eyes of the law. That is Napoleonic Code. Hell, we embraced a lot of Napoleonic Code here in the United States. It's ridiculous. Anyhow, that is what it is. I had to get it off my chest. Thanks, Mickey, for the four ninety nine. That's yeah, maybe got, if, but... you wanna, if you want to if you want to post something else in the chat, I'll pull it up at some point here. Um, did you hear? Thanks for, thanks for the five. Did you hear Tyson's going to fight Jake Paul? I yeah, think... I had that pulled up last show, and I ended up getting rid of it because we had way too much already. I mean, I think that's crazy. Does he understand that even though Mike Tyson's, what, 56, he's still going to die in the he's ring? Only, he's only 56. No, he's older than that. No, he's only 56 years old. Remember, he was champion at age 18. Right. So we all thought, well, you know, 18, but no, he's only 56 and he's built like a tank still. And I, I do think Jay Paul's in for a real whooping. A real. Oh, no, whooping. absolutely. I mean, they, they've they been posting pictures of uh, of Tyson walking around with a, a cane. And that could just be, you know, he's pimping and all. He doesn't necessarily need it. But no. uh, <laughs> they've also showed him working out, hitting the hard bags. Yeah. So well, good luck. And Tyson is only 57. Look at that. Mm. Crazy, I mean, I, th I think I think a uh, a uh, decrepit old Tyson can still beat the crap out of Paul. I mean, maybe he is older than fifty six. I thought he was. was. I really, I really feel like the uh, these 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 celebrity uh, boxing matches have just been for show, and there's never really much of a winner. Or maybe you know the Paul brothers come out victorious in the end. When you start thinking like, I don't really think they should be coming out victorious. Well, yeah, they, they take a lot of they take on a lot of people who are retired and stuff like that. But no, I mean it's not that Jake Paul's a horrible boxer. He's actually a really decent boxer. He's beat some pros. He's not awful, and you know he looks like a boxer when he's so in the weird. ring. You know he actually looks like he knows his trade. But this is Mike Tyson, and I don't care if he's fifty six years old. That dude I, can still hit. I mean, he can hit. I, I, I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe any, I don't believe any of the Paul brothers. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure they know how to do that. One's MMA, one's boxing. I know, but, but I'm just saying. I don't know. I, I don't know about the MMA. Guy. I just know the boxer. I know they got famous on YouTube. Is that yeah. It? Okay. Jake, uh, Jake got a uh, or Logan got famous going into the Jap. Oh, he is famous beforehand, but yeah, really famous by going into the Japanese suicide forest and filled the dead body. Oh, that's right. And that was really tasteless. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. So if tasteless gets you all these fans and makes you a millionaire, why are our show stuck at 3,000.14? You keep, you, keep, you keep telling me not to show dead body. Man. I feel like that's the only thing that's missing. Oh, that, that kind of tasteless. But we're tasteless in other ways. Yeah. Closest thing we've come to is showing uh, yellow boots or green boots, whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah, that is probably the closest we got. But, you know, his body's all frozen and stuff. It's not like he just committed suicide. Hmm. Yeah. So, so do Derek, people, do people go to that forest? Do they hang themselves? Do they? Yeah, it's a, it, okay. uh, well, it's a, it's a suicide forest. So I, I imagine it's not just predominantly all hangings. I'm sure there are other uh, aspects like uh, uh, Sepiku, what is it called? Sepiku? Sepiku? Is that where you take the sword and the sword and <laughs> yeah, yeah, gut yourself? Right. Very slow and painful death. That's a but horrible you keep way your, to go. You keep your honor, though. Okay, it's all right. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, just shoot me in the head, please. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'll pass on that. Uh, yeah, whatever. You're, works you're sitting there going, just like, 
uh, I can go to the forest and either you know disembowel myself or hang myself, or I can go pick a fight with some triads. Yeah, I, I might do yeah. that. I think I'll do something that's much <laughs> faster. But that does remember remind me of the singer Smith, Elliot Smith. Remember mm -hmm. Elliot Smith? No, not really. Um, well, he did most of the, the soundtrack for Good Will Hunting. Um, so that's how he yeah, became enough. famous. But uh, he supposedly says his girlfriend stabbed himself twice in the heart. And he died. Now, not to mention how hard it is to stab yourself in the heart between mm -hmm. your ribs and all that and get it right. But to actually stab yourself in the heart once and puncture your heart, then pull it out and do it again. I don't think so. That sounds fishy, like a fishy story. Um, so anyhow, I think it sounds fishy. I'm not accusing her of doing it. So just to be clear, I don't want to don't want to be about, sued. What about the chick who just got off on um like whatever it was, like uh hundred community hours for going through a a, a weed induced craze and stabbed her boyfriend like a hundred times. A weed induced craze? I've yeah. never heard of such a thing. That's what she got off on. Well, that must have been well, she, you know, like, <laughs> easy joke made there. I know it's got. <laughs> she, she had to have some. That had to be pepper. At least with something, man. Yeah, because I'm sorry, you get that stoned. There ain't nothing crazy about you. You go to sleep. You might eat some, a lot of chips and Twinkies and ice cream, mm -hmm. but the last thing you're thinking about is getting violent. I've never heard of that before. When you're that high. Mm. I mean, you want to laugh and watch TV and eat stuff. That's that's it. Killing someone a hundred, stabbing them a hundred times. So that's got to have some other PCP in it or something. Sprinkled something else laced into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that oh, man, just, what what a president that sets too, man. You're just like, yeah, that weed induced uh, frenzy, and I I, 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 you know, ran over a, a parade. You know? Yeah, I. No I've never up with that from, but I, I, that happens, but I'm saying it's bad either. press for weed if that's the headline. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, and it's, a, it's and new it's propo, fake, new propo against weed, and right. it's fake fake news. Honestly, if that's what they're saying. But, uh, but sweetie, it was oregano, it wasn't even weed. <laughs> <laughs> There's some PCP in that stuff. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Had to have been either yeah. that or uh, it's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Either that. Yeah. That's just the defense. Like we're gonna say you were in a a, a frenzy of a from induced by weed. Yeah, I don't smoke. Well, they don't test. It's out of your bloodstream at this point. <laughs> uh, not to mention, weed doesn't do that. Well, we're gonna pretend it does. <laughs> All right. What else? In, in the court, in the court, we're gonna have you. We're gonna have you. Uh, you know, smoke blunt, and uh, you're gonna go crazy. There you go. Problem solved. Yeah, that sounds like a really bad defense. <laughs> a really bad. It worked, I guess. I'd be pissed. If I was hmm. the uh, family. But... <sighs> Me too. Hundred stabs. Yeah. All right. What else? All right. What? Well, on on a uh, on a more jovial topic, let's let's talk about some soccer topics here. What? Derek... Sta stabbing someone a hundred times isn't jovial. <laughs> depends. I mean, it depends on how high the high is, I guess. On a PCP weed induced rage. Woo! Look at this. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. So boy. So Derek, I said we, we talked we talked about the Belgium jerseys that are coming out. The, the <coughs> yep. brown uh, bottoms. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had to say Germany on a Germany jersey coming out this year, mm -hmm. what color do you think they're gonna rep? Well, typically it's of course white black. Sure, sure, sure. Um you they in the past have fluffed a little red in there and a little little yellow, like in the stripe areas. Mm -hmm. But the away shirts more can be green, have a green top. True. Um, so yeah, that, those are more the traditional colors. Yeah. What about pretty and pink? No. 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 No, no, no. That's horrible. It's what did they do? Just copy the AC Milan away jerseys. Is that what they did? Because that's what this looks like. That is wretched. This better be like the... Germany hey. will be pretty in pink come Euro 2024 <laughs> with the host nation dropping this eye-catching away jersey. Eye-catching in a worse way. <laughs> why, why are they doing this? They're ruining years and years and years of tradition. Of history and tradition. What do they, who do they think they are? The United States? Come I mean, on. 
if you're um who's the team in pink and uh didn't wears... uh, didn't germany like in the 90s or early 2000s or whatever have a have an actual germany colored kit like this though with the whole uh third you know, kit maybe third i don't know kit. with these with these little oh, jagged yeah, yeah, yeah. things and everything going up right. and down like this they had something yeah. like that didn't they yeah but it wasn't but pink. german colors so it was german colors right right yeah. this is this is so un this is disgusting this breaks every rule I mean, this is your country. This is not a club. You don't screw around with your country's colors when it comes to your when you're doing World Cup, Euro Cup. What is pink? What's the significance of pink? Breast yeah. cancer awareness. I guess. I doubt that's why they did it. Hmm. I don't see little breasts thrown on there to make <laughs> point it out. So yeah, this is atrocious. Sorry to see it. That's no. unfortunate. It's a shame. Yep, it's it shame. is. Better be. Better be the third kit. Better not be. Uh, first it, it, well, I mean, Ben Blazer says it's the Euros away kit. Well, at least the it's good not news the first is. Kit. Good news is maybe they maybe they'll only play the first uh, three matches of the uh, tournament and uh, uh, fail in the group stage. You want to see it that often? <laughs> That'd be sad for all those that are Germany fans. But yeah, it's true. But. But, I mean, yeah. otherwise, the, the alternative, Derek, is looking at that color on the away games. I had not to every it. game. That's not every game, though. I had to do it today. I watched AC Milan play in the, almost the exact <laughs> copy of that when I got home today. Yeah. Mm. Well, <clears throat> let's move on from uh, let's move on from that eyesore. Okay. Let's talk about uh, FIFA. FIFA is always a hot topic. Let's talk about some FIFA news. Money bags. Apparently, they're making some changes to the uh, to the U seventeen World Cup. Okay, and this is only this is going to be starting in twenty twenty five, and apparently, it's only for like the next what are like handful of World Cups. These are the boys. Yeah, so I mean, when I say a handful of World Cups, how, how many how many years is that for the U seventeens? I mean, a handful is more than two, right? Otherwise, you'd say a couple. Yeah, it was a, hand, a handful of World Cups. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. probably three. Three four? years? No, no. How many years? How, how long of a span are we talking about? Oh well, it's every four years. So you're talking about twelve years worth. U seventeen is every two years, technically. No shit, is it? Yes. I don't really. But not never, anymore, Derek. I never thought about that. FIFA is part of a governing body's steadfast commitment. Don't start any tweet like this. <laughs> don't start anything about rubbing your own cock and balls. Just get on with the message. Mm. Quit talking about yourself. As part of the governing body's steadfast commitment, commitment to youth football and the following and following the decision to expand the U-17 World Cup to 48 teams and hold its annually rather than biannually, it was confirmed that the next five editions starting in 2025 will take place in Qatar. So yeah, instead of instead of a buying uh biannually. Is that that you spell biannually? biannually? Yeah, I think biennial. I, I guess so. Biennially, Bien. Bien. biennially, <laughs> biennially. That might be a typo. <laughs> I don't could. know if that's a typo or not. I thought there was. But a, yeah, so instead of every in there. instead of every any every two years for the next five World Cups, it's going to be annually. In so we're going to get a you. I don't know if it's. Well, it says will take place in Qatar. I don't know if that means for the next five years it's going to be in Qatar. But yeah, it makes well, well it's starting in 2025 in Qatar. So maybe that's just the first year. I don't think I don't so. Based, based on, I'm an English major, based on the sentence structure, it was confirmed the next five editions, comma, starting in 2025, comma, yeah, will take place in Qatar. That the way this sentence is structured is the next five editions, Fair. starting in 2025, will take place in Qatar. I wonder. I wonder if that's. I wonder if that's the overall arcing plan, though, because it's like we're gonna, instead of having two World Cups in that time period at two different locations, we're gonna have five World Cups at one location. Yeah, that's annually. Weird. That that seems like a stretch. And I know there's a lot of people on here talking about how like, oh, it's 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 gonna be great for the the players. There's gonna be a lot of exposure, uh, probably more exposure than every two years because that means more. Uh, every it's like every group because you always talk about like. When it comes to like the U17s and a little less effect on the U20s, 
it's like if you were born, if you weren't born on January, February, and March of that first year of the U17s, you kind of get dicked over because the players are more developed more like more often than not. Yeah. So, uh, but people are like, oh, that's going to be beneficial for the uh, the players. More 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 players will be scouted and you know, blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And yet, only one or two, or maybe three, if you're lucky, will ever amount to a hill of and beans because that's how it works as far as playing for their men's national team in the future that's just how this works folks hmm. so you 17 world cups go look at our teams not the most you know not the Polisic era that's a little different yeah. but before that i mean it was like every u17 world cup you get like one guy <laughs> who ended up being somebody who ended up playing for the men's national team or two guys out of the whole team. So it's a crapshoot. It's a crapshoot. Yeah. Think of the team that Freddie and Du played on and all the supposed superstars that were supposed to come out of that generation. Yeah. Uh, fail. So the people in the chat have made a comment of this is uh, biennial, biennially, biennially, uh, Bi- means at once every two years, not okay. biannually, which would be once or twice a year. Yeah. Biennially, by biennially. Yeah, this is yeah. this is the English language, guys. It's just not a word you use very often, to not be often. honest. Yeah, I would just say every two years. Yeah, <laughs> rather than every so, two years. So I, I look at this and I go, man, there could be uh, there there could be some positives here. There could be some negatives. Negatives just being the overexposure of the tournament, meaning that. The U-17s will literally be camp after camp after camp qualifiers, limited to, limited games for them to really establish a U-17. Yeah. If you, if you think about it, if it's every year, let's just say it's every year in at December, that means you still have to do all the qualifying. That gives you, a, 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 gives you uh, seven plus months or whatever to ho- host camps and friendlies and stuff like that. And I know, like in in Europe and other places around the world, you know, the U17s are actually at academies or or in the U19s, U21s, or whatever the hell. So they're already developing at a stage where, at least here in the states, I mean, U17s. I mean, it's just that's not a lot of time to really establish who is should be on the U17 team. I hate to say, sound like Craig Burley here, but I could give a give a I could give a stuff. I really could. This is meaningless to me. I really don't care about the U-17 World Cup. I mean, I watch it. I think it's a fun thing. I don't really depend on any U-17 squad to really contribute much, but maybe one or two players. So that's why I watch it. But as far as the competition, eh, it's all right. I watch it because I'm trying to find out who out of that 18 or, or the 23 that go have a real chance. And I've been burned by that. Before Brett, of course, mm. the Gideon Zalalem thing. So, you know, I don't even put much weight on that anymore. Even if I do see a player and I'm like, that kid looks really good. Is he part of our U17s? I think so. I Certainly so. part of the U20 uh, whatever's um, World Cup where he U20. was really good. Where he was really good. Um, I'm not sure if he was, but the point being, I, I I just don't really care that much about that tournament and never have. I watch it and that's it. And I don't get excited about it. I don't get worked up about it because it's not a fair reflection of what's going to happen down the road. You go look at Spain and Argentina and there's U17 teams. Again, it's the same thing. One player, two at best from these uh, squads ever make it to even get out of their own country and play in Europe. And be a competent European pro in a top five league is a miracle, let alone making the Argentinian World Cup team. So that's why I just don't give a stuff. That's a, that's a fair assessment. We talk about that all the time, too. Yeah. The, the odds of actually cracking out of the U-17. Because, again, everybody develops a little bit differently. And if you're talking about a U-17 team, I mean, it's just, you're, ta- you're talking about 16, 17-year-old kids. And exactly. A lot of them won't develop. I mean, won't fully come to their own fruition for another year or two at least. And, you know, I pay more attention like to the 15-year-olds that make that squad and start 
because you're 15 and you're playing in the U17s, so and you're like, okay, this kid must be have a little something. It gives you, it gives you a little bit of a head start on uh, the jump, yeah, yeah, because he's 15 and he's a starter. You know, that was like when they bump kept bump, they kept bumping Sergeant up the ladder, right? And, and you knew, well, this kid has something. He's yeah. he's a pretty good player. I didn't lose my 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 shit about it though, you know. Just I thought that's promising. And then when he went to Verde Bremen and almost immediately started, I thought, okay, so that's validated. This is a good player. Let's see what also, happens from here, here on out. Let's see. Here. Also, similarly to the uh, um, to the actual World Cup that they're planning on expanding to, uh, it looks like the U17 is also expanding to 48 teams. We so have we, we talk we talk about the lack of lack of uh some talent. Oh, uh, this senior age man, we're talking about the U17s of uh, some gonna, random island. Tahiti is going to get smashed 12 nothing. Fiji or Samoa or whoever makes it out of the Oceania uh, which will be two teams maybe three. They're going to get crushed except New Zealand won't get crushed, but everybody else is getting crushed. They're getting destroyed. And, um, yeah, I mean, what's the point of that? Again, Oceania should be absorbed into the Asian uh, Confederation, period. By the way, Stephen Goff, former guest, 2011. Um, we could have him back on, but, Brett, I get the feeling that our show's changed so much since 2011 that Stephen Goff probably would he's – he's kind of a serious person, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure he would get along with the show anymore. Hmm. We'd have to skip on certain aspects and certain topics like incest. We couldn't laugh sure. much because Stephen Goss <laughs> not a big laugher. He's not. A I, big know, I feel like we could break. We could break him. You think we could break him? We, we would break him. We couldn't break Shredder. If he laughs, he laughs. I didn't think we broke Shredder when he came back on a couple of years ago. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't, he didn't he didn't go giggling by any means. But I mean, he certainly had uh, he certainly enjoyed himself. I'm sure he did. He was here for a while. Um, he's not a giggler either. A lot of these reporter yeah. types are not gigglers. Um, I imagine Maybe Jeff they should Carlos get out more. Are, probably <laughs> they should follow Meg's lead and enjoy life. Meg, Meg, Meg's a good time though, and I mean that on the show, guys. So don't get sick. All right, yeah, don't be sickos. All right, what else you got? Well, we always talk about the uh, the blacklist of uh, of reporters and independent, oh. con uh, independent contributors and content creators and stuff like that. We talk about this all the time. Yeah, um, we talked about her. We talked about that. Uh, we talked. Jimmy talked about it. We talked about um, a couple other people behind the scenes have talked to us about it. Can't name names because they're still in the scenes. <laughs> Right, but no, but, they have uh, definitely like say afterwards or whatever. Yeah. We've had long conversations about being blacklisted. Yeah, it's uh, real. We, thought, we, we it, talked about the uh, one guy from Chicago that got his uh, press uh, his press creds uh, revoked. And while we're talking about that, we can talk about another one. I and so, another guy from uh, St. Louis who got his press. Oh, that uh, yeah. Yep, from U.S. Daniel soccer. Cuts. Daniel Cuts was nice enough to bring this to our attention. I uh, thought that we'd appreciate this. I haven't seen but apparently Samuel Cuts a fart lately. He's in from time to time. I don't know if he's uh, overtly talk uh, talkative or oh, okay. just from time to time. Just you know, I just up. I just miss saying his nickname. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so FC Cincinnati apparently revokes uh, an independent writer's credentials for two weeks. Oh boy, two whole weeks. Yeah. Jeez. Still kind of. Kind of a dick move. I mean, I'm sure that uh, what uh, this person said wasn't horrific by any means. And Laurel even says uh, that FC Cincinnati has revoked my credentials for two weeks. I stand by my reporting and will continue to cover the team from afar during that time. But wanted to be transparent as why you won't see quotes in my coverage today. Well, I wonder what she reported that was so horrible. Do we know? Uh, let's just I'm sure it's in here somewhere, but I never, I, I just literally got this like a few, uh, like 10 minutes before the show started. Okay. Well, if you know what she uh, wrote so that was so good. horrific, let us know. But I'm sure it was really not much. Okay. Cause it doesn't take much yeah. to set these, these, uh, these twats off, these little 
tender vittles people off. It doesn't take much. They are soft. They're Ivy League soft. S-O-F-T. Oh, there comes the thunderstorm, Brett. Oh, right. it's not hitting you, huh? Yep, it must now. It's quieted over here, although it's odd that it must be, it'll eventually hit me because it's got to be, it's heading northeast, so. Uh, well, then this is this just another front then coming through. Yeah. God damn it, I think my car window's cracked. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. I was, sitting, I, was sitting there, I was sitting there watching all the hail come down with uh, my son, and I go, I'm really stoked that my, I'm really stoked that our Highlander is just chilling outside in our driveway right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So we don't really know what she said, but the point being, you can't write anything negative. Mm -hmm. Whether it's MLS, US soccer, they're all tender vittles. They're all a bunch of in pussies, is what they are. And um, they're soft Ivy League. Soft soap, uh, stare in the mirror, vain, uh, unable to take criticism because they're always right and you're always wrong because mm. you're just a fan or you're just a lowly journalist and they're executives and they run a club and they graduated from Princeton or Harvard or Dartmouth. Actually, I should put Dartmouth in there. At least they have some standards. Or Brown. Whatever, dude. Um, or whatever business school. Wharton. Business school for pigs. Whatever they graduated from. They can't take a little criticism. It's just how it is. Hmm. And the list goes on. Another band reporter. This one for only two weeks. Not like the kid from St. Louis who was banned for life. From US or the kid from Chicago guys, just his creds taken away this season. Just I don't swear. know if they'll come back, but I doubt it. I mean, they might. They might say, "I hope you learn your lesson, little boy. You better not write any of them negativity <laughs> articles on us no more." Yeah, because I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, revoking somebody's credentials is gonna is gonna change their tune, right? Right. Certainly, I mean, they won't go out and post more negative stuff after you take away the credentials that you've given them over the course of the past couple of years. Yeah. Beyond reporting something absolutely false, like the CEO of Cincinnati is a child rapist. All right. You're just making yeah. that up. Okay. Yeah. I can understand why you might revoke, you know, her coverage, her ability to cover the team. But my guess is it's something. Very, very tender vittles that you just couldn't handle because mm. you're a soft soap, lily white, Ivy League, nose picking, butt scratching moron. That's yeah. what you are. Al Weinstein says, What did Stu say? <coughs> uh, Scorpion or Scorpion Larry is going off on Stu right now. Yeah, uh, I believe he might be referring to the Brandon Vasquez topic, which we will cover. We will when get we cover to the US topic. Yeah. If he said something else, we'd let us know. I'd love to pull it, it up. It's not just Stu who said that, by the way. Jesse said it too. So I'm sure there are other people who have said it, I think, in the mainstream. Actually, they all seem to all get on board at the same time. So all of a sudden, Brandon Vasquez is the next coming of freaking Pele. All right? Because he's had a, a good half season at Monterey. And that all the other guys doing what they do in other leagues, that shouldn't be. That's not good enough anymore. Hmm. You know, guess one's in a slump. The other only plays in the championship. And the other one, he only gets to play 10 minutes a game. All right, Billy Meredith. I thought Jamie Carriker spitting on a 14-year-old girl was bad. Inferring his colleague is a slag in front of the world was, oh, my God, I did not see this. That's kind of a harsh thing to do. Well, I, well, I want your take on this one. We let them uh, do it here in a second. I want your take on it. All right. Let's see what he says. Next. Wear it next. And for the last part, you've got to wear it. Ah, and I'm loyal. I'm loyal. To who? Like oh, like Manchester United. Nice, man. Thank you I'd very like much. Look nice. Not to Malik. Oh! What? Oh! <laughs> you <can't> say that. <laughs> oh! He has not a mention in the show yet. He I has not a mention. Wear it. <laughs> Malik is her boyfriend, yep. by the way. I think he's a fitness guy, fitness guru dude or something like that. Like, or <laughs> that's, or Alabama or something like that. 
I think so. He had mentioned, he had mentioned the, one of those states at one point. He's in the states. I know yeah. that. He's an American. Um, <clears throat> if you go Google, you can find pictures of them at parties or you sure. know what other gatherings together. <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, don't get her in trouble, Jamie. I was I was happy I could understand what he says because half the time I can't understand <laughs> half of what Jamie Gar- Carragher has to say. But uh, with his Liverpudlian accent, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that wasn't that. It wasn't that bad. She didn't seem so, to take that big I'm, a deal. I, 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 this is. I mean, I don't know how Kate took it. I, I like Kate a lot. She's great in all the other uh, all the other shows that she's a part of with the U.S. and national team players, uh, yeah, former players and stuff like that. Love Kate. Uh, she's great in this. She's great with this uh, mm-hmm. this squad. So, yep. um, I don't know. I know. I know. I know. Winalda heard this and was uh, um, irritated by it because oh, you know, he's friends no. with Kate and uh, seems like he almost had an axe to grind with the uh, with the uh, with Jamie there. But but I don't know. This just comes from me who has who has uh, several friends and they're friends. Girls. Let's be honest, and they're they're friends. I would have no problem on on public TV saying worse shit than that. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, guess what? Uh, guess what? They would throw it back to me. Yeah. Hundred uh, percent. Uh, Kate did not look that offended. She just took it in stride and she said, What are you talking about? You fool. Yeah. I mean, it's that's, fine. That's, that's how I took it too. I, I, <coughs> I know a lot of people are out here like, oh my god, I can't believe you just said that to her on public TV. I'm like, it it, it sounded, I mean, in my opinion, maybe 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 there's something wrong. Maybe they did cross line, I don't know. Uh, but it sounded more like to me that these are two coworkers who are who are all all four of them are all very friendly and they both uh, they banter back and forth all the time. Oh yeah, they do on the show constantly. This doesn't sound, this doesn't sound like it's a big thing, but it was it, it, it drew a thing. They they've embarrassed her about Malik before on the show. Yeah, so it's it's you know, and you know she says stuff about them too. It sure, we're about to hear forth. we're about to hear some of it right here. Yeah. This is uh this is a uh, this is afterwards. This is not immediately afterwards because they went from a field to this, but this is maybe like a day or so after. Um, and they they're gonna talk about this. Okay. Well, after yesterday's uh, road trip to the Emirates, we are back home in our Champions League studio here in London. Good to be here. I am Kate Abdo, and uh, well, you know what? This group we've been together now for three and a half years, is mm-hmm. it? I think, and I grew up with a brother in doing this show. I feel like I've I've gained three more here at the death. So we starting off strong. Saying, hey, sure. we're all we're all family here. I like mm-hmm. Henri's already sitting there going, I didn't say shit. <laughs> Leave me out of this. Yep. It wasn't me. Just get this over <laughs> with. Get it over yes, with. Yes. Okay. Three more brothers. So let Thank me introduce you, you to the group again. Uh Thierry Henri, of course, the golden child. Oh. Can do no wrong. Always says the right thing. Nuts. Sets the example for the rest of us. Can he be intimidating? Mm-hmm. Yes, he can. Wow. But he is the mm. big brother that we all look up to and we all aspire <laughs> to, Jerry. Wow. Yes. Well, that's very that's very nice of uh of what uh what she said about Thierry Henry. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It's pretty Maybe nice. She... Well, he's married, right? I I would assume. I don't know. No, he has I, I think he's married, he has bought... kids. Yeah. It, it, the whole the whole uh the whole wags and stuff like that has never been a concern of mine, really. <laughs> I have no idea who's married to what or who's dating whom. Well, it was for D-Rack when I was covering. So there you go. Fair enough. I had to cover the wags back in the day. Mm-hmm. It was part of the the job. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yep. The whole. Uh, Amen yeah. to that. <laughs> then there is the middle child, Jamie Carragher. A chip on his shoulder, <laughs> capable of saying anything for attention. Does he go too far sometimes? Absolutely. Does he apologize? Yes, he does. But all of us have that one annoying family member that we still love and mm-hmm. accept. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good enough. Yeah, seriously, I mean, come on. If you're gonna stand, I can't believe of all people, Eric is worried about this. That's yeah, a little. I'm, that's a little heavy moralizing he, for me. But you well, know, I, mean, he, I have he, a history he, with Eric, so I understand that that's not shouldn't be surprised. He, me- he mentions a lot of times that it, it, he's fr- he's good friends with Kate and stuff like that. So maybe he just took it a little more personal than it should have been. Um, or maybe, maybe it did cross a line because she does mention how, does he apologize? Yes. Maybe he came up after the, the show and said, Hey, maybe that was a little too far. I was it just probably, playing just so you know. And she's like, no, was. I understand. I understand. 
don't bring my private life on the show. Yeah. You know? I mean, we do it here, but, you know, we don't list anybody by names, you know. I've never said your wife's real name on the show, and I wouldn't do that. I'm sure I have, but I don't know. Or yeah, Lisa I, said her uh, her initial. Yes. Which goes by. That's so. it. Right. Well, we don't need to watch this because we don't need to hear, hear what she has to say about Mike. So. And that's only as it refers to her pegging you on a regular basis. <laughs> True. <laughs> Other than that. Well, only when the mood strikes, right? Right. We've talked about your kids before because, <laughs> you know, they drive you crazy. So. Sure. Yeah, and I've, I've, I think I've mentioned both my kids' names. But I still haven't let them, oh, on, yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't let them on the internet yet. Right. I'm not gonna let. I'm not. Uh, Jackson keeps asking. When, when can I? I have a friend at school that has a YouTube channel. I'm like, that's nice. Yeah. When can I start doing it? Yeah. You know, well, make Later sure, on. When, make when sure you're older. He, you're he much much older. <laughs> make sure he doesn't continue to walk around the class going, "My dad's <laughs> got a YouTube program <laughs> on the straight red card. Go, wa- you guys should watch it. No, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Stop for, saying that. Stop, Stop it. It's not for six year olds. Stop it. Gonna start getting phone calls from the principal. Uh, everybody <laughs> at school has been pulling up uh, your husband's uh, YouTube channel, and um, it's a little inappropriate. And yeah, everyone should be the, watching it. All the kids are now saying <laughs> cock and balls on a regular basis, and I think that might doesn't need to do you with your show. They keep talking about hooking up with stepsisters. <laughs> I don't even know where that it, came from. It's a it's, soccer show. It's not incest. What? Okay. Anyway. Well, that was news to me. <laughs> I saw that Scott Jork doesn't really watch our show or her or Pete's show or because yeah. he only listens to podcasts. Wow. Yeah. What I a told- hor- what a horrible world you live in. <laughs> That's all I, I gotta told- say. Well, all he, you watch is podcasts. He he listens to podcasts when he's you know working out or driving to work and stuff like that. He doesn't frequent the YouTubes, and we see that with our numbers. Our numbers are, are well, hold on. U.S. You, soccer can, is a very niche population. Can you not walk the dog and listen to our show? I mean, Tack listens to our show when he rides his bike every day. Well, I don't have unlimited data, so no, I can't. Really? Huh. Correct. I mean, unless I want to burn data, no. Okay. I, don't pay, I, don't I mean, I guess it is long. I pay, by, I pay by the gig, boy. It's two hours, I guess. It's not like you have to download the show. You just have it on your phone. Where the YouTube there, channel running, there. running YouTube when you're not connected to Wi-Fi burns the data. I get it. I get it. I don't know if you do. No, I do. I get it. <laughs> it's only two hours of YouTube watching. I mean, well, Tack doesn't seem to care. He writes his bike and listens to it. He probably show. has unlimited data. Probably, yeah. Probably. probably. Well, Scott, sorry, we're not a podcast yet. I mean, we were, well, we, but we did. We posted for a while, then I got lazy. Uh, among amongst all the other stuff. I do yeah, the, I wouldn't uh, call that lazy. Buddy, so. I think you just have burning Burning low on time. <laughs> I think you have <laughs> other things to do. So there yeah. you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't be uh, that harsh on yourself. Mm. I just I did that just so maybe he could subscribe and watch our show on YouTube instead. Like, ah, oh, it's my fault. I'll get it up soon. But hey, come on to you to watch us here. Well, it makes sense that he and his friends, the people he talks to on the Twitter sphere, are surprised John Brooks didn't make the squad. Like, and or even surprised that um, he's been left off for this long. It's like, if you've been listening to our show for two years, you wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise you at all, at all. And if the fact that he was listed 59th, 59th out of 60 players on the roster list and out of alphabetical order, and obviously an elite throw on to satisfy people like Max Bredos, whom we love, but seems to think, that that means that things are okay between Brooks and, and, and Greg Berhalter. They are not. And we have explained why on this show. And guys, keep spreading the word. Because if people are out there and they're surprised by the fact that Brooks didn't make the team, then they're not paying attention. Because even the, all the other shows know it now, too. Like, they laugh about it on uh, Jimmy's show, Jimmy Conrad's show. By the way, who should be on Monday? Jimmy going to be here yeah, Monday? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy should be on Monday. Okay, so Jimmy. Jimmy I, he, he, he was he was going to be on the show today, guys. And I, had, <coughs> I, I actually had created the 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 pot the uh, show thumbnail and all is on YouTube. Jimmy's face is on there and everything. And then he's like, "Dude, I can't make it today. I'm going to have to make it Monday." I'm like, "Okay." So then I quickly went through, then scrubbed it, and updated it. <laughs> yeah, but even Jimmy, Jimmy was actually on the show, the second show, 
um, this was a couple years ago when I basically laid out the whole locker room scene and what happened and um, all the inside information that we had. And Jimmy's like, I mean, if you say so, I mean, sure. And then lo and behold, not long after that, he's like, okay, you were right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, you had something there. And now when they talk about John Brooks, they just skim over it because they know regardless of how well he will ever have a stretch of games for his club team, he will never. And I repeat, as long as Greg Berhalter is the manager, he will never play for the United States men's national team again. The only shot he had was with Hudson. Remember? You know, you know, I bet you, I bet you anything the turd in the background is actually Greg and he's leaning into that, making fun of the turd. And he is hearing you say this right now. Mm -hmm. And he'll be on the next, he'll be on the next camp. Watch it. You know what? I will just, go by just so, everybody, just so everybody come and clip this saying he will never be on the next roster. And by the way, if for whatever weird ass <laughs> reason he makes the Olympic team, that doesn't count. Okay. Even well, though that's happens. they're not gonna release him for the Olympics. No, they're no. not. No, no he's, a, he's a starter. Um JSY talks football. Uh smash the likes. Thank you, brother. We appreciate it. Yes, we always forget to tell people to do that, and you don't even have to smash it, you can lightly nip it, touch it. You can whatever free uh, phalange or whatever sticks out. You can poke it. There you go. Scorpion. <laughs> Larry for $2. Kate's partner is a boxer known for P world. No joke. He's a boxer. I didn't know he was a boxer. Larry, I Larry a... I'm not showing that photo. Cause that's not Kate. <laughs> Unless you're uh, saying that the guy behind this lady is Kate's boyfriend of an old photo. Maybe I'm still not showing it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I heard he was a fitness dude. I didn't know he was a boxer. Um, so that's all I know about him. And it's not <laughs> like she broadcasts it all over, you know, about him. She's mentioned it. She's brought it up on uh, Kicking It before. They've talked about it briefly, her relationship, mm. but not much. Not much. And it isn't something you'd want to talk about if you're a public figure. Oh, let me talk about my boyfriend on the show. Like, that's a little weird. Mm. All right, Brett, what else we got? I know you're looking at the comments. And well, I'm, I'm, reading, I'm reading up on Larry's comment here. Uh, so he's, he's a boxer trainer. Okay. And his ex-wife who's in the photo with him that Larry sent my way is known for porn, apparently. Oh, keep but it classy. You would, you, you would never guess it by looking at the photo, Derek. Why? Because she's not attractive? <laughs> uh, with, how, with how big and buff uh, the, the guy is, let's just say that there's a... It would take two of him to even be exposed from behind her. So she's, she's in front. It would take at least two of him just to see him. She's a large mammal is what you're saying. Pretty much, yeah. At least they're going from the, the photo that he sent me. If, if she were on a beach, they'd try to roll her back into the sea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're right. moving on to new topics, Derek. Derek, what's okay. that over there? Transfer news. Transfer news. Who's getting modern on transfer news? Who's getting over on transfer news? Transfer news. Everyone loves that transfer news. But me. Whatever. I saw some people were like, I like the old transfer news. Well, yeah. we we can switch it up. We can do that one. Some, pe again. some people like the new one. Some people don't. Some people like the old one. That's okay. We can mix it up and keep everybody happy. Yeah, don't worry about it, guys. Transfer news. Transfer news. Everybody loves that transfer news. But me. We got well, both ready. We got both ready. Second one's shorter, granted, but you don't get the ogled <laughs> in there. You don't get Whatever. the monitored, you yeah. know. That's important to get that in there. All and right. Mar says old is greater than new. Yeah, I know. I saw it, BMR. Don't rub it in. I spent some, <laughs> I spent a whole five minutes putting the new one together. And then you don't like it. I like the same amount of time I spent on mine. <laughs> I like the ogled part. It's my Lover favorite word. says, combine them. <laughs> well, then it'll be like a minute long. We can't do that. <laughs> Anyhow, it was, it's yeah. nevertheless, I think it's a, a good transition point. Again, just to clarify, transfer news can also mean people's contracts. Okay? Yep. Contract right. change. Contract, contract change. change. Everybody loves those contract changes, I guess. Ar Arsenal, I... Uh, Arsenal I just one eye, not both, just one eye. USA goal. They that's like ogling, though. He's getting close to saying ogling, yeah, right? That's wrong. that's wrong, right? 
They're eyeing his nuts. It's 2020. It's 2024, guys. Come on, stop ogling these players. Jesus Christ. USA goalkeeper Patrick Schulte, who is a good goalkeeper. As they assess options, should Aaron Ramsdale move from the Emirates? So if he wants to be part of the Arsenal loan army or a permanent backup, then he should go to Arsenal. Well, what a what a weird. Sorry, I got I got blinded by this red color on my screen. What a weird. I'm gonna pull it up here in just a second. But what a weird uh, way of wording this. If Aaron Ramsdale leaves, they're eyeing Patrick. Maybe they're really already, not as a replacement. Maybe they're already eyeing him. Oh my God, God Al! Damn, Al! Al! You just hit it out of the park. That's a meet at the park with Brett in a private in a in a stall with lube and everything. <laughs> Whatever, I agree to it all. That's just not even a reach around anymore. <laughs> this is grabbing ankles time. All right, Al, we appreciate it. We really do, brother. Mm -hmm. Thanks for consistently creating content, for being open-minded, for sharing your art, Derek, and building community. Brett, I know how challenging time management can be with the kiddos. <laughs> I do, too. By the way, I had them. They're just gone now. Yeah. The audience isn't half bad either. No, you guys are great. Listen, we wouldn't do it if you guys aren't here. I mean, what would be the point? Yeah. I love the Schnitzel Brothers, but when you got eight <gasps> people watching your show every time, that, that's that, pain, be... that hurts me because I mean, they're great guys. They are great. It, it pains me to watch. I'm hoping they have good numbers on like podcasts or something. I don't know if they have a podcast. But they, my my God, they they keep consistently posting multiple live streams on a on a daily basis at times, and yeah. they have like one or two people watching it. It might actually be them with the shit video. I don't know what's going wrong with them. You know they, what? The, they which, should have numbers at this point. Cooking shows are more popular. They should do a show about how to cook schnitzel. That would probably be more popular yeah, than their show. It's true. Unfortunately, they're great guys. Um, hey, yeah, good to be hanging with you guys. Yeah, we love it. I look forward to every Monday and Thursday. Yeah. It's like my favorite time. Uh, just because I know I'm going to get to talk to soccer, hang out with people who know soccer. <laughs> and I get to <laughs> vent a little and get some stuff off my chest. I is AI Al, is the best. Al, Al is the best. Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what there's also the Weinstein brothers, right? Um, they're both professors, I believe. Sure. Uh, I think I One saw them got kicked out of that, uh, the whatever that Washington Pacific Northwest Everest tree. Yeah, there. they're old school liberals, and they obviously <laughs> that's not good enough anymore. It was Brett uh, Weinstein and uh, something else, Brett and his brother, yeah, Eric. Brett and Eric, Brett and Eric Weinstein, yeah. They Good seem like done. really level-headed dudes. Um, so I think I saw them on Rogan once. I don't know. Sure. Seem seem like nice guys. Yeah. Yep, seem like nice guys. Uh, anyhow, this is fine. I wouldn't give it much um, squeaky squeaky. If I were Patrick Schulte, I would not go to Arsenal. I would go somewhere where you had a shot to play. Somewhere. If that's the championship, mm -hmm. go to the championship. And then be so goddamn good in the championship – that whatever team you're with gets promoted and takes you up. Or you're so good, some team uh, in the Premier League goes, damn, that kid's good, and they pick you up. But I, maybe, Arsenal, maybe maybe you can follow Turner's route, right? You Go could. for a year, sit the bench, and they get sold to a, uh, a team that's battling relegation. I mean, he'll learn things, but he's got to be prepared to be mostly bored well, for a year. <laughs> and the big, the big difference between Turner and uh, Patrick here is that uh, Turner was at least repping the United States during that time period, too. Right. Although, so, although Schulte was on the short list here for this. Sure. Call I don't disagree with that. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that it's a bit, it's a little bit of a difference. Uh, yeah. he'd, he'd be going the, he'd be going the, uh, the Gaga Solonina route where you go to the big club, you just get loaned out immediately. Yeah. I'll find himself at Oipen next year. <laughs> yeah. It worked, it worked for Gaga. Gaga's going to find himself, he's going to find himself at a better team next season. Or Telstar. Or maybe he'll end up at Adeo. They need a keeper. All right. Um, and he can hang out with Justin Che. <coughs> Alex Calabrese. Justin Reynolds officially joined FC Lugano today as his visa was approved for his short-term loan until the end of the Swiss season. I spoke with the homegrown defender as he prepares to embark on his European adventure. Well, I wish him luck. Um, I don't know about yeah. Trailblazer. He's not the first guy to go to Europe and play on a mostly obscure team. Like, if you think of 
Swiss teams. You don't think of trailblazing Lugano. for Chicago. This is trailblazing for Chicago. The, you don't think of Lugano. Out. Well, Lugano, the, Lugano, Chicago have a, a partnership, sort of like I'm how just, FC Dallas and like I think Bayern. I think we got the short end of the stick here, but it's Chicago. <laughs> we got we got some room to work up here, but but yeah, so they have they do have a partnership, and this is one of those things like, hey, instead of sending him over to Tulsa, why don't we send him over to the Swiss League and get training over there? I mean, he'll get to play against young boys, right? And I mean, literally the name of the team. Young boys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and not, not can, the uh, not the uh, MLS Next Pro team. You mean uh, right? They got some good teams there. Basel's usually sure. pretty decent, well, and I, uh, Grasshopper has traditionally been pretty good, but not as much lately. So yeah, I'd be, I'd be surprised if he actually does end up playing during this because it's already March. He's, How old he's is he? Way, he's on his way out. Uh, he looks like seventeen in this picture. Area, yeah, the range yeah, I was going to say about eighteen area. Yeah, if I recall okay. correctly, because okay. the other Riddles brother, I think, was there before, I and mean, he ended up getting released. We already have one American playing in Switzerland. His name is Lucas Poss. He plays for Lausanne Uchi. Hmm. So, uh, but nobody has any clue who he is, and even though he starts every game at center back, they are the worst team in in the Swiss first division. Maybe that's why Lugano was in the Conference League and third is third in the Swiss League. Yeah, no, no, they're not a bad team. I just not going to be a lot of people familiar with Lugano. I, don't know. I just uh, yeah, and, I, and again, I, I given the time frame when he's leaving, when he's heading over there now, we're looking at like a couple months at most. Yeah. This is a, this is a glorified training stint, which is great because hey, maybe he goes over there, maybe he impresses, or maybe he just goes over there and gets some good training and comes back the following at, at, at halfway through the MLS season. Maybe so. Anyhow, uh-huh. not really big news. No, but it's it's more it's more transfer news. I mean, it's not like I don't care. I do care. I'm not Craig Burley here, where it's, I don't give a stuff about it. I do. I'm <laughs> keep an eye on him. Uh, oh, but did Craig Burley also said, by the way, this on that same show when they were talking about the Americans on PSV, he said, "I don't care about the Americans on on PSV." He said, "I don't care. I, who cares?" He said, "I don't even care about the Dutch league." Dude, why are you hired for this show? You're supposed to care about the Dutch league and the players on it. You maybe you don't have to care. Well, he said, you, you he, said he, doesn't, caring. He, he said I don't care about nationalities, basically what he said. I don't care where they're from. That's fair. That's fair. But then it's job. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dan's job at ESPN FC is to say, hey, there are a few Americans who played in this game. Isn't that cool? And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> so you yeah, know wait, well, one, he's not American. So why would he care at that point? Yeah, I don't care. Like, hey, hey, there are three Brazilians on this team. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> I don't. Why do I care? I don't give a stuff. Is what he said. Yeah, I don't give a stuff. <laughs> All right, Larry Henry says former U.S. Men's National Team prospect David Ochoa is now part of LAFC 2's roster for 2024. Wow, how far have they fallen? And why? Wow. Are we, why are we wording it former U.S. Men's National Team prospect? Why not just say uh, current uh, current L tree reject? Yeah, he's not coming to play for us. He's it's over. It's, under, it's in, don't even don't even mention U.S. Men's National Team around him. Yes, at one point he was, and he was a former prospect. Yes, but that's a weird way of wording it. Unless he's just trying to get clicks on this. Though, oh, there's a, there's a yeah, maybe. Well, like, he can't a, play for the U.S. anymore, so it doesn't matter. Larry Henry's a great guy, though, so I'm not. I don't, doubt, I don't doubt that. I'm just saying it's just. He's also a good, he's word. also a good writer, so I'll, I'll give him a pass. I'm just saying, weird word, weird way, weird way. Yeah, I know, I get, again, I get, here, here, it is here, weird. It is weird. I, hearing I, former U.S. Men's National Team prospects makes it sound like he well, he was he was he was a big prospect at one point, but he, he didn't pan out. Well, that's it, what that's it sounds tr- like to me. It's true. Well, he didn't pan out because he chose to represent Mexico instead. Right, and be an idiot. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, though. It just doesn't sound it, it sounds like he could still in theory represent the United States if he gets his career back in order with the uh with LAFC. Yeah, maybe uh, that's nice protein. Yeah, that is left in there as a possibility based on the sentence structure. So it's just whatever. Get Italian football news says Juventus are preparing. Or should I say this like in Italian? Juventus no are preparing a plan to sign Atalanta's doing Coupa Myers, reports Fab Della Valle. Fab Della Valle. It involves the sale of three players. 
Samuel Ealing Jr., Weston McKenney. Weston McKenney. I hate him. Matthias Ma Matthias Sule. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eric, that was impressive. I, uh, that was great. I really got immersed in the culture. I really feel like we're talking Italian soccer now. Let's go. Boom. You felt like you were in Little Italy somewhere back yes, in the absolutely. 19 back in the nineteen fifties, hanging well, out. Nestor, with... Nestor has a different take on this. Was that Dracula? <laughs> it was kind of a little Dracula. Blah blah blah. <laughs> He's Hungarian Italian. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't give up all those players for Cooper Meyer, Miners. I, I just well, wouldn't. I mean, he's it, a good player, but I'm not giving up McKenny for that. Does does this does this indicate that these three players are going to be sold to Atlanta for him? Yes. Or or does it mean that in order to get this guy, they have to make money off of these three players by selling them to anybody? Yeah, that's not as clear, is it? So, yeah, I mean. I don't know. That's, that seems well, that I, seems rough to rough to do for one of your uh, most uh, prolific midfielders this season. Why will you vent to sell its best midfielder? And may well maybe maybe Weston's holding oh. out for a certain in, an income that uh, Juve is not willing to pay. We did have conflicting uh, comments the previous shows where there we had one source uh, one source on Twitter who has connections or whatever simply say, "Hey, they're they're negotiating for an extension of two more years or whatever it was." Well, and then following the show, we had one that was saying, like, hey, the, the talks between Weston and Juve aren't going so good. So they're looking to sell. I really hate to tell everybody this, but I don't think there are any other clubs bigger than Juventus who are going to be willing to splash the cash for McKinney. Hmm. And I say that you can count out all the English clubs that are big, number one, because all they remember is Leeds. And they're very jingoistic, so they're not going. No, they're not going to be any English teams except for middle mid-table teams, maybe like Aston. Well, Aston Villa is pretty good this year, but generally middle-table teams willing to pay for McKenny, but they're not paying as much as Juventus is going no. to ask for. Bayern Munich, no, they're not signing him. Um, so I don't know where he's going to end up if they do sell him. Like, who's going to splash the cash? Um, because the league with all the money being the Premier League, um, they are not going to splash cash on McKenny because they have a bad taste in their mouth because of the Leeds thing. I hate to say that, but they're very, um, how do I say this? They're dicks, right? They're very snobbish. And so, yeah. I don't I don't think they, see, they, see, they see him flunking around with uh, with Leeds, and then they see him going and uh, excelling at Juve. But they I'm, don't. It's, it's, I'm just I'm saying it's possible that a club could sit there and look at it and go, maybe the problem was Leeds. Or they Leeds might think Boston. they might think that, or they might think, yeah, maybe yeah, he, Syria. He, he just yeah, Syria, and he can't handle the Premier League. Yeah. He couldn't handle it the first time. What's how's it gonna change? Like that's how arrogant they are. So sure. I just yeah. I, yeah. I just don't expect anybody to splash the cash that has the money in the Premier League, and surely he's not going to Real Madrid or Barcelona which are the only two teams really or outside of maybe Atletico Madrid who could splash any kind of cash um, in the sense that you, what Juventus are looking sure. for. So Tottenham has been continually linked to West. They have some money. Well, that wasn't, it wasn't just Tottenham though. Wasn't it, wasn't it Conte that was uh, really pushing that? Um, It was hard to say. I don't think, I don't think he's, he's not there anymore, right? No, I, it was really hard to say who was pushing for him. Um, But yeah, now they've got the, the uh, Australian Greek freak there. So, I don't know if he has any interest in um, in McKenny at all. Mm -hmm. So hard to believe that guy's Australian because the Australians had a hard time getting coaching jobs as well in England because Australians mm -hmm. like Americans and Canadians are generally looked down upon as like, you know, the bitches and stepchildren of England as far as soccer go. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah. They still feel that way in many ways. Not everybody. Not everybody. I, I mean, you know. I think the fans are relatively fair for the most part. Not about McKinney. They loved Adams. Their 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 estimation of where Aronson was at was correct, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh so a lot of people are mentioning Milan, mentioning Inter and how they've got money that they can splash. Would you be interested in possibly selling McKinney to like direct competitors like that? No. And number two, I don't think people realize they don't have as 
don't, neither of those teams have as much money as you think they do. They really don't. And um, like Inter right now, the fact they're doing with as well as they have in Syria with the club that they have, with the players that they have, I mean, they've been on a pretty strict budget. They're not splashing cash all over the place. So what they're doing this season is really impressive, mm. except for just bouncing out of the Champions League. That sucks. But um, sure, sucks for Italy because that was it. No, no, no Italian teams, no Serie A teams left. Right. So that's not good for their their ratings by any means. While we're talking about Milan, let's uh, let's stick with Milan boys. We're branching away from uh, Juventus and away from Weston. Okay. Let's talk about the uh, the attacking trio and all the drama that's been around the Pulisic and uh, Liao debate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They hate each other, supposedly. Liao's really upset. Blah, 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 blah. Not true, yeah, the, not true. The, he's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Raphael Liao to Sky Sports. With Giroud and Pulisic, we understand each other well. I don't need to watch them because I already know where the, they position themselves in the box. Then behind, I have Teo, who's, by the way, Teo Hernandez, best player on that team, outside of maybe Liao. Um, I have Teo with him. I have an extra weapon. Everyone helps me to be a better player, and Pioli puts me in the position to be calm by telling me, come in and enjoy yourself. And if you saw the warm embrace today we, between, we can. between yeah, Pulisic, just, yeah, okay. Let's just see. He just scored his goal. He's running around. Oh, nope. I got to come back this way, guys, because that's where. Yeah, yeah. Leo is. I'm coming to hump you. I love you, buddy. See, now I saw this and I saw it as Leo saying, That motherfucker's coming over here. I'm going to suplex him over my head. And he just couldn't. So no. I feel like I feel like the medical staff immediately came onto the pitch to check out if Leal's back was okay after lifting him up that high up in the air, right? That had to have happened. Man, this is man love. Come on. <laughs> Stop it, Brett. This, these two guys love no, each they, other. He's clearly trying to hurt Polisic right here. Bear hug into a suplex. Man. I mean, Polisic's got his, his cock and balls right on his belly button. Look at well, that. Brian has a different idea. Tummy Tum sticks. <laughs> <laughs> No. So, so all that on, shit yeah. about him stealing Liao's goal and that Liao should be upset and all that. All the jackassery and jackasses out there who said all that shit, just go stuff it. Yeah. Yeah. It's my I, third uh, time saying it today. I think I, I think I went on to like uh like <coughs> eight to ten different people posting about this and mentioning mm. admit, just making different comments about how uh Nigel would like to have a word with you about yeah. how wrong you are and that they hate each other and type of stuff. I'm always I'm always relieved. Brett. I was I wasn't the only one who I wasn't the only one who was doing that too because I, every now and then I'd click on one I'd see like there'd be like three other people already posted something about it. I'm like ah they've already got it covered. <laughs> yeah, thank God. And I'm always relieved when somebody says something as stupid as that and I don't know them and yeah. they don't follow me. So I'm like I don't know this guy. Thank God because this guy's an idiot. Um, Scorpion <laughs> Larry uh, for two dollars. What if CP had an OnlyFans like Kate's boyfriend? I don't think CP is anywhere near having an OnlyFans. And uh, Larry has uh, Larry has uh, filled up my uh, my notifications with uh, pictures of, of, of assuming that this is the same person, allegedly Kate's uh, boyfriend with her with his ex. In the OnlyFans? Well, no, just just photos of them hanging out. Okay. Some some of them are like nude, and they've got like perfectly placed like uh like like smiley faces covering certain parts of the photo. Hmm. I think um, Kate should be careful. I don't trust this character already. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Kate needs to be careful. Can we please agree, stop Raymond. using Polisic's initials? I agree. CP. Just, just posting CP all over the place, man. And we got a I got a folder of of it. If you don't want to say that. Taken out of context, that'd be horrible. Yeah, I think the reason people do it on Twitter is obvious. It's yeah, short. Characters. characters. Yeah, saving I'm characters. But uh, I'm always I'm always in there taking away my double spaces after periods and the uh, uh, my uh, my apostrophes and stuff like that just to try to get a couple of uh, extra characters in there. Me too. I I change U to just oh. the the letter U often. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man, we're, we're moving along here. 
Yeah. What else do we have? Um, we have, uh, we have, uh, I've got two topics. I don't know if you've got midweek report or anything like that. I do. Yeah. You want to cover the midweek first? Yeah. Midweek report. Why not? Midweek report. Midweek report on Tuesday. Hoppy did not dress. Yes. Pearl. <laughs> yeah. T-Fock went 90. Scally went 10 in a win in the, oh, no, no, in a loss in the Pokal, the Pokal. Mm. Um, yeah, that was not a great 10 minutes for Scally, I have to say. Um, not totally responsible, but had fault in the goal. Uh, one of the goals. Christian Ramirez, by the way, this is MLS, by the way. I just wanted to bring it up. Christian Ramirez got an assist for the crew, and Griffin Dorsey got a goal for Houston. This is all that uh, CONCACAF Cup stuff. Um, yeah, but, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody from Philly scored. Yeah, no, now it's really embarrassing. Oh, it's it's looking like six, seven years ago again. Dude, it, 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 it is the... X took over whenever that happened. That their game and uh, who's the other game? It was like four one or something like that. Tigres versus Orlando. Yeah, when those games came out and like that, every league MX fan was like, "Man, we've been on it for like the last year, and everybody's been saying about how MLS has taken over league MX." I'm like, "Yeah, I know that's a problem with making these kind of statements, right?" Yeah, exactly. It's always gonna bite us in the ass, guys. I thought we would definitely had caught up, but based on the scores of these games. Six nothing, and it wasn't just the score. It was if you watch the game, which I did watch the Pachuca Philly game. It was an embarrassment, a fucking embarrassment. Plain and simple, the way yeah. Philly played was embarrassing. I was texting you. Mm -hmm. This is horrific. They're getting their asses kicked. They're getting stomped. McGlynn looks like crap. Um, what's his face looks like crap. The whole team looks like garbage. Like they don't care. And then uh, yeah, demoralized after. Barely scraping a tie against uh, Chicago. I'd make everybody sad. I guess. All right. Um, I mean, you said it, not me. <laughs> I know. All I right. <laughs> so then we move to, uh, let's move to Wednesday. Adams went 20. So let's, we'll get into when we talk about the Nations League roster. Mm. Adams had 20. He didn't do much. I mean, he closed gaps. He was where he needed to be. Um, oh, the game four. They won. Nice. And I actually watched the whole game to watch 20 minutes. Um, although I knew when he uh, came yeah. on, I, just, want, okay. I just wanted to see the context of the yep, game. Nope. That, that makes sense because that would be the same thing. If uh, if I find out that Geo comes on for Forrest for like the last 20 minutes or something like that, I'm still watching the whole game because I want to see right. what happens up to that point and then what happens after it. So Which sense. says to me that they are going to play him. Now, they – Greg had a conversation with the coach at Bournemouth, and Greg asked him how long and how fit is Tyler, and he said he could probably go 45. So I would expect to see a little bit of Tyler. I wouldn't expect to, to see him start. Mm. Um, but people saying, and we said it too, we said if he's not 100%, he should not come. Um, I, 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 I'm well. We're going to get into this, but I'm still into. The, I'm still in the category of. I'd rather him just chill in England, continue training and so forth, rather than fly all the way to the United States, play in a match or two, maybe, and go from there. I'd rather I'd rather him get fit. We have other options available to us that we could play. And I, I well, we'll talk about this. Oh, here's let's not, let's not, let's not spoil spoil the. Well, I'll just I'll just say to close it out before we get to it later. Though I do understand the argument that other people have that say. But wouldn't it be nice to get him reintegrated? He hasn't played for the U.S. since the World Cup. So let's just get him on the bus, on the team, get him reintegrated with the crowd, get his leadership back. You know, treat, him you like know. We treat, treat him like we treated him along. But you're, Don't take up a roster spot. Just come over to camp. Well, he is going to play 20 minutes, Brad. I'm going to tell you that right now. Sure. He's playing minutes in this. No, um, I, don't doubt, I don't doubt that now. Yeah. Now that, now that he got 20 minutes. But prior to, prior to this match – I would have said, well, I don't think he's playing. If he didn't play that match, I would have said, leave him home. Um, still but he was he was moving really good, dude. He looked sure. fit like, as he, hell. He's had almost had a, he's had a year to uh, do it. So he looked very like, he, yeah. He looked fit. Pepe, yeah, yeah, he's a little over a year. Yeah, yeah, it's been <laughs> uh, Pepe eight minutes. Uh, the last eight. Oh, um, missed an opportunity. Not a big one. Tillman. 
uh, and Dest went 90, and that was in the loss to Dortmund. I have to mm. say, they both played really well. And in fact, I think for giant stretches of the game, TSV dominated the game. That's what uh, that's what Pete was saying on Twitter. He's like, he's like, Dort or PSV should have won the match. They should have, but they just couldn't put anything away. Right. Tillman had his usual couple opportunities, but right to the keeper, just straight to the keeper. So he's just gotten a little unlucky lately. He's hitting the ball too cleanly. And then uh, Polvara, since his injury, has not really regained his starting spot with Aberdeen. He was in the 18, but did not play. Um, Thursday, uh, we already talked about Pulisic uh, getting a goal and assist today uh, for the win over uh, Slavia Pra. And uh, uh, the absolute demolishing of them. I'm kind of surprised that he even played that as long as he did. Well, right. Yeah. 63 minutes. Yeah. Uh, red card killed the game off completely. Uh, sort of before like the first round, right? Before that, Slavia was actually in the game. They were mm -hmm. playing good. Musa. Oh, my God. He should have had an assist. I mean, he basically has a perfect through ball. I can't remember who it was. I don't think it was Leo. Um, but one-on-one uh, -on -one with the keeper and just couldn't score. And then even earlier, Pulisic um, had a great move where he could have had two goals, actually. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't He couldn't flip it over the keeper, um, who was the last man standing. But the keeper did a good job cutting off the angle and uh, get in front of Pulisic so he couldn't lift it. Um, but great physical presence by Pulisic with two guys hovering right on him, shoulder to shoulder, just shouldering them off and keep on trucking through into the box. So press it there. And then um, Shaq Moore, an assist in 90 and a loss for Nashville against uh, Miami. That was yesterday, but he did have an oh, assist. Man. So I had to bring it almost, up. Almost like, almost, almost a gift. From the gods to let Miami come back and win that in aggregate there. I watched it. It was a fun game to watch. I'll say that I'm much. Not, um, not screwing that by any means. I'm just saying that know, if, if, if somebody could script it any better, they wouldn't have. I mean, everybody that was counting out, not messy, but um, um, Suarez. Suarez. Uh, they were very wrong. <laughs> very wrong. It, it was funny. Uh, I forgot who posted it on, on Twitter today, but somebody's like, all the people, all the people who are saying that uh, that Suarez was washed, washed up. Uh, was, wa well, they yeah, washed up, I guess. But um, yep. I don't know if he set up. But uh, he's like, it, it was you know a bunch of crying faces, and I responded with like, you know, hygiene is important. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this: uh, the way those two play off of each other, Messi and Suarez, and then the rest of the former Barcelona guys are just—I mean, they were just a like. Several layers better than Nashville. Don't say. You take four <laughs> world class players, you put them on the same team, and that's nearly half the squad, right? Mm -hmm. It's close. Four out of 11 players, and it's just night and day. Busquets makes people look stupid out there. I mean, it's just, they like, if you would have told me, I would have said that was a Premier League team playing against a League One team. That's what it looked like that whole mm. match. Um, Cowell, 87 minutes. This is actually late Wednesday night, uh, and a goal in a win over mm. Zendejas, who also had a goal. So both the Americans scoring in that game, but Zendejas and Club America going down with the loss. So uh, good for Cowell because he's getting booed. He's getting booed by Chivas yeah. fans now. That didn't take long. That didn't take long. A couple games. I mean, a couple games from uh, some early success. A couple games, poop. Yeah, immediately, they started shitting on him immediately. One bad game. A and of, A lot of Americans scoring in Liga Mexi. Don't they remember? He's half Mexican or something, right? They don't care that much. I don't even know if he's oh, that's, half. Uh, that's, uh, that's the big uh, um, Chivas issue, right? They're not like they like stop. fully Mexican and... Uh, they don't do that anymore because well, they're no, both... No, the, the thing with the thing in uh, with Chivas was that you couldn't play for you had to play for Mexico if you played for them. They got rid of that, but they still. I'm sure they still. There's still that stigma. No, of, they got. What, they you're got born a, in America. What you're born here? Nah. No, they got a foreign goal goalkeeper too. Sure. I think he plays for Peru. I might be wrong. I can't remember, but I know he's not. He's Good not a Mex. He's not Mexican. Um. All right, that's it. There's that's all. Midweek report was short. Always is right. Yeah. Midweek Mid report so much is shorter. short. <laughs> My midweek report is short. <laughs>
So, <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to move on to a topic that we've covered at least uh, seven or eight times so far. But the problem is, keeps changing. Garber and uh, Garber and Nelson just keep giving us more stupidity, fun things to talk about. Oh, I think this is that slide you sent me. Yeah, I sent you a good slide. Yeah. MLS execs Garber Rodriguez say open cup move is for greater good of U.S. soccer. Oh, shit. Uh, it's for the greater good. That's hot. Yeah, right. I, it's just like a, this is good. 50s politi- politician speak. Mm-hmm. That's what that sounds like. Yeah. So, oh, open cup move is for greater good of U.S. Well, soccer. All I can think about whenever I hear the greater good is uh, Hot Fuzz, um, Simon Pegg movie. Um, they've like, I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. No, but, I don't think so. Uh, but the, the the villain of the movie is basically the council of this small town, and mm. they are you know killing these bad parts of the town off, like people, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, off because uh, it's it's for the greater good. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes <laughs> when you start using that terminology. Um, as a, a, like it becomes animal farm, right? Mm-hmm. So you can't. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And that's the and, problem and with for, that. For the greater good means good for us. Good for you. There'll be a, yeah. there'll be a little uh, trickle down here and there for some, for some teams who might make it later on in the, uh, later on in the cup that actually have to travel, but it's good for us. <laughs> no animals on the farm. We'll eat bacon. Except the pigs can eat bacon. All right. Um, eat the bacon. That's that song uh, that George Harrison wrote for the Beatles. All those little piggies mm. stirring in the mud. It's an animal, animal farm. Can't go for some song. bacon right now. It sounds delicious. Bacon's good. Mm. Uh, imagine Major League Baseball. I don't. Uh, he said this. <laughs> he did say this. Yes. This is not a joke. No, this is this legit. This is from the article. Imagine all the people. Oh, my God. He starts out by comparing (laughs) soccer in the United States to Major League Baseball. Imagine, imagine Major League Baseball or the NFL playing all their teams in a tournament. That was scheduled during their season in the middle of their season. You can't compare the two. What a joke. What a joke. This guy's a fucking, this is the, sorry, it's more, the worst thing he's ever yeah. said since he's been. We've sworn enough already. We're not going to try. Yeah, but those were, those were little swears. I've, I've managed to blank out all my F words so far in ways that the league had little to no involvement in at all. Well, that's what you signed up for. When you signed up to be division one, you stupid cocksucker. Garber said. <laughs> We financially have no involvement in it. We don't control the brand. We don't control the state of the facilities. Boy, when you said it was about control, Brett, you weren't lying. That's all it is. It's money and control. They can keep peddling these excuses and trying to make themselves out to be the victims here. By all means, continue. But everybody is seeing through this. I mean, this isn't even... this, This sentence, this paragraph is so atrocious. Does he not know that this makes him look worse? Like, does he, is he totally deaf to the room? Does he not know what people are saying? Mm -hmm. By the way, neither Seb or Hurt replied to being tagged in that video. Either of ours, yeah. Maybe they just didn't have 52 minutes. That's always a possibility, right? (laughs) That's a long video. You've always got to listen to the criticism to try to improve your show. And we'll see tonight on their show after I'm going to watch it after this is over and see if they bring it back up. Don't but uh, shout out. <laughs> I, even if they shit on well, us, I, over here making fun of us, <laughs> I, I'll I'll take it. But I basically did it because I didn't want to post that on Twitter and then have them find out about it behind yeah. their back because that's not cool, you know. Well, every everything we say about anybody, I mean, hell, if we had a chance to get Garber on here, I'd absolutely tag him on all the shit that we said about him, dude. I, dude. yeah, I mean. We, <laughs> Bring him on, but I read this quote to him and go, "Do you know why this quote makes you look dumb? Do you know why this this quote makes you look like a repulsive, disgusting, selfish pig? Yeah. Do you know? It's a it. It is ridiculous. Yeah, 
It is ridiculous. I mean, and now, of course, people are people are using this quote and simply saying, "Well, yeah, it's an American league. We should be mirroring ourselves towards American leagues instead of the European leagues." That's stupid. Yeah. Why would we do that? Why would we? Okay, so we want to do the NASL again. That worked out great. Number one. Mm-hmm. Number two. Do not compare. Even though it's Major League Baseball slash Major League Soccer sounds a lot the same. It's not the same sport. And we've adopted. You can't go on adopting all of the FC and SC and all the in fake ass um, European soccer team names that you these morons at every MLS club can't come up with a new name outside of United or SC for a club and borrow all the European stuff from them and then go, but okay. But when it comes to actually having pro rel or having an open cup, we don't want that. Well, yeah. And they're, they're the big reason for comparing it to MLB and NLF and NFL here is that they're talking about a cup that they don't have or tournament that they don't have control of. They used because to have some control it, over it. For 17 years, they had yeah. some control over it. There was little to no bitching during that time period. And guess what? Almost every single one of those years, every single MLS team participated. No mas, no fuss. Now, some I teams did. may complain saying like, oh, we can't. We want to focus on the regular league instead of uh, this no cup. There's some teams that participated uh, wholeheartedly and wanted to win the cup. But you, they're still you, required to do so. You think MLS and some are pissed that U.S. soccer pulled out of the some contract and stole sure. Chris, Chrissy Barlow Cohn or whatever her name is? Sure. I'm Made her sure. president of U.S. soccer? You know, I don't know what they're pissed off about, but it is something about control, obviously, because, you know, this has been going on for a while. So the fact that he's like, imagine this magical thing happened. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, in the middle yeah. of the season. You mean like it has for the last 17 years, you <laughs> freaking idiot? Yeah, and I don't think I have the quote where he talks about this, but Gerber does quote in the fact that he uh, he's been on the U.S. board for like like two or three decades now, or whatever it was, and learned nothing. Well, well, if you've been a part of the board for U.S. soccer at that point, and you haven't really made any adjustments, and now you're bitching about it now, yeah, it's it's clear as day. You could have you could have orchestrated and implemented change all those years ago from within. From within, and you still yeah. are within. And yes, right. this, this whole, this whole uh, change for the greater good is all occurring from within the benefit, the your actual leaders, the the the, the billionaires who actually run the league. I mean, um, this to say that that he doesn't control the brand and he doesn't control the state of the facilities. So what? That's what every cup like is like across the world, everywhere. So at least. Mm-hmm. Rodriguez came on. Now he wasn't hammered like he should have been. Not that he shouldn't have been hammered in a rude way. But this this is disgusting. This I hope Herc and Seb tonight take this quote up. I'll be curious to see who quotes this and who else responds besides us. I got I'm curious. I, I don't know why I've never really thought about this up until now. Because obviously uh Sydney uh worked with some for many years prior to becoming US soccer's president what did i call her earlier shelly i don't think so i think i think it's cindy oh did i okay Carlo, yeah. Yeah. um you you mentioned like do you think do you think some in mls are pissed that they lost her to u.s soccer but that the presidency also occurred right around the time when u.s soccer split ways with some right so are they pissed that they lost her or are they eager the fact that they have a plan yeah, I mean, right now she looks like a plant, and so does Batson. They look yeah. like plants, honestly, because only having what seven or eight teams, MLS teams, eight, in, eight teams plus eleven uh, uh, little 11 boy next little uh, next pros. Yeah, can we just call them little boy teams? That's fine. <laughs> the, the hairless nut team. Well, as we found out, there are some overage players on the on the teams as well, especially in Chicago, but. Right, eight of them in Chicago, yeah. but the rest of them average about one or two a team. So, yeah. all right. so I mean, it's I, 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 tinfoil hatting going on, guys. You know, not making a, an actual statement, but I mean, the timing of it all makes it seem like it, she was more of a plant than an actual like a uh, gain, if you will. 
think yeah. it might be a game per se, but uh, but yeah, it's just the timing. It's a little strange. And we when we say plant, we mean like a literal fern. Yep, <laughs> a potted plant. Of course, because she's doing nothing, doing nothing, just sitting by the windowsill, getting sunlight. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously not doing much. I do. I did have to bring this up, by the way, because sure. he wasn't on the midweek report. But Rafa Benitez got fired at Celta de Vigo, oh. and so um, we'll see who Luca De La Torre's new manager is and how it affects him. I hope it doesn't. Yeah. Um, Esmir had an assist today. Uh, it's a kid I'm pretty high on, mm-hmm. but not high enough to you know, like scream to the from the mountaintops about him yet or break out the Vaseline and no, no, get I'm all... like I'm liking what I see from the kid. So. Oh, I do. No, I do. I'm just keeping calm. All right. I'm thinking mm-hmm. I see something really good here. Um, but then again, didn't we see moments of greatness from Kate Cow? Not Kate Cow. Uh Kate uh King Clark. Clark. Kate Clark. Uh that, that was I felt like those moments were very much few and far between. I know that we're that's true. It's one of his er, they were early in the season, but he's had a lot of consistent good moments throughout the season so far. Yeah, I was just trying to draw some sort of parallel. Although Esmir Esmir starts and he plays, whereas yeah. Kay Clark they couldn't didn't. get on the pitch for New York Red Bulls. So mm-hmm. um, there is a difference there as well. So not compar- not comparable, just maybe the hype is comparable. Mm-hmm. I just don't want to hype him up so much that you know. Yeah, you know, we got we to see we got to see what, what what more he can provide. You know, moving forward, right? You know, let's let's not, just, not go too crazy. Let's stay calm. Stay calm. Stay patient. Mm-hmm. All right, what else we got? Here's the next quote. There's more quote. Oh, I've got I, a bunch of quotes. Yeah. Holy crap! I think it obviously is an emotional, passionate, hot point for some group of people. You think? I think we're going to end up in a good spot. I will tell you this: if not for the energy that we put up. And said it really can't continue the way it is. U.S. soccer never would have made the commitments that they're making to it now. I feel very strongly about that. God, this guy. Man, Good job, he, MLS. He loves Good job. To, here's another guy. He's so vain. He loves jerking off in a mirror. <laughs> it's like, uh, in a mirror. You're welcome. You're welcome, U.S. soccer. I saved God. everything. Oh, this is the best. And, and you know what music Garber <laughs> plays while he's jerking off in the mirror? Um, too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my, sh- you know, that is, you could just see it. That dude is sick, man. This guy loves himself some Garber. Garber loves some Garber. He does love Garber. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, good for you. All the pressure you've applied and now you as soccer have caved and allowed eight teams in and yeah. We stamp our feet like little babies. We would have never gotten our way. And they're going to get their <laughs> way more than likely. Right, well, uh, with yeah. with um, MLS teams playing, not MLS teams in the bracket, they're going to get yeah. seeded higher. So all the USL and NISA teams and League One teams will have to play all MLS teams. They'll all be knocked out, and then we'll have MLS teams in the quarters and the semis and the final. Get all the mm-hmm. other the stories that make the the cup great with the random draw all gone. It's all gone. Yeah, all gone with the seed system. Uh, of the competition, this is uh, more Nelson. Get ready to wipe some slime off, guys. N- Nelson, the failure at Chicago, Rodriguez. Of the comp, or what do you, what do you call that? Nelson failing, failing up Rod- Rodriguez. Yeah. yeah. Of the competitions MLS participates in, Open Cup is third at 6% of interest for fans. This is referencing the, the, uh, the, uh, the polling they did with their fans as far as how interested they are with the U.S. Open Cup type thing. Yeah. League's Cup, League's Cup is at 4? Yeah. 4%? That's a joke. And he says, oh, but it's only after one year. It's only been one year, though. <laughs> pay, pay, pay no attention to that. It's only after one year. That tournament we just made up out of our assholes. Yeah. Um, something we invented. Yes, at least he, am- he admits they pulled it straight out of their rectums. Mm-hmm. Um, Leaks Cup shattered attendance records. It brought new fans into the marketplace. Number one by far is MLS Cup, and number two is Concacaf Champions Cup. And Concacaf, I would I would argue, through some of the same prodding, 
that we deliver has vastly increased its investment to elevate the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Man, without MLS, it sounds to me like all of CONCACAF would be a gigantic garbage pit. <laughs> I mean, do, do, they, do you think they have like a bruise or is there some like wear and tear on their skin from patting themselves so much here? Well, kind of like Weston McKenney, they continuously have to pop their shoulders back in their, sh- yeah. their sockets. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, the league's cup shattered attendance records. Okay, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing to consider. How many of those people are of League MXE fans? Exactly. They didn't. And how many shatter. of those? How many of those people are going to come and support your team afterwards? And by the way, didn't we watch a couple of the League's Cup games that were between like Puebla, and there was like two people in the whole crowd, like Colorado. Let's just say, you know, yeah. whatever. At Puebla, yeah. there was no one there. So yeah, don't give me this shit that it was some great. Yeah. Give me a break. Anyhow, yeah, I mean, talk about auto fellatio. This is just. <laughs> <laughs> this is some amazing stuff. Both of these guys are super flexible because their mm. penises are really small. They have to be super flexible. Well, again, it's the same problem they gave to U.S. soccer. They gave to CONCACAF as far as how to properly operate and run their cup. Jeez. God, if it wasn't for MLS, CONCACAF Champions League would be, well, I guess the exact same thing it is right now. I guess, yeah. Right. I mean, how- how many people were looking or going around looking for uh, some of those uh, CONCACAF Champions League games and couldn't find them on TV? Yeah. Where Where is MLS bitching about that? Fans right. couldn't find the games anywhere. Well, that's what they said. Yeah. They said that about U.S. Open Cup. They haven't said that about Champions Cup yet or Champions League yet. Right. Well, yeah. There should be a song for all this with a video of them dancing around like fools called I Can Auto for Late. You better congratulate. Something like that. Here we go. Uh, Lover Dot says the Costa Rican club that played New England just outshot them twenty-three to five. <sighs> New England are not very good this year. I don't um, know. What, I don't know what happened, but I guess that is what happens, kind of, when you lose Bruce Arena, yeah. who wherever he's gone in MLS has been a success. Wherever he's gone, it doesn't matter. When before he got to New England, New England were garbage and they turned them into a competitive one of the best teams uh, in the eastern so uh yeah. well unfortunate for uh the costa rican side uh they only tied one one and new england ended up winning on aggregate of one to five who was the uh, costa rican team was that al al, al-, al- Yes, thank you for okay. pronouncing that because I would never have been anywhere near that. I don't even know how close I am. I just doing out of memory. <laughs> it looked close enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Copa America should take as many as 64 players away from MLS teams. Hmm. From the other teams, because you're only going to lose maybe two for the U.S. men's national team, right? Yeah. So two of those 64 players will be for the U.S. team. The rest will be for all the other teams. Um, Costa Rica, Honduras, you know. Predominantly the rest of the CONCACAF teams. Exactly. (laughs) Not Um, not terribly too many from uh, South America are going to be joining. (laughs) It's not just about schedule congestion, which we created. It's player load, their inability to ejaculate, apparently, how many matches they can play, uh, especially when there's an increase in national team tournaments and the Nations League increases and their club World Cup is coming. Uh, and the club World Cup is coming. Okay, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> yes. listen. yeah, The club World Cup, we're concerned about that? Already? Oof. You know, here's the I mean, song. It's, wonderful. it's questionable whether or not well, they're revamping the club World Cup, aren't they? Yes, it's gonna I guess be I like, don't know how many teams are going to be gone for that. It's like 36 teams now, I believe. And um, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure. But it, it'll be better than the whatever stinky, stanky thing they used to have uh, in Qatar and before that in Japan with like one team from each confederation. It was a joke. Yeah, um, yeah I guess. I Listen, they created some of this congestion themselves. And then the MLS teams like DC United and others create their own congestion even more. So I don't really want to hear about congestion. Mm-hmm. You create your own part of this yeah. congestion by coming up with bullshit competitions. 
Yeah, no, I agree. A la Hulense. That was close. <laughs> so, I mean, just going off of what we got this year, of course, stuff about the Copa America, which could see as many 64 players gone during that time period. Uh, but you also have the Nations League. Well, that's true. Nations League is going to be done and over with after this next week. <coughs> so, I mean, that's not really going to be taking too many players. I mean, it, it will be taking some players out of the equation, of course, yes. Uh, Jamaica, and who did we say the other team was? Was it Costa Rica? Canada? Can- no, Canada didn't make it. They lost to Jamaica. They got knocked out by Jamaica. That's right. I think it's, yeah. I think it's Costa Rica. Or Panama, maybe. One of those two. Panama? That huh. sounds right for some reason. I'm spacing something's going to have in the chat before I get there. God, yeah. Jamaica, we Mexico, have... United States, and who's the fourth team? Are we? It's been a while since we looked Panama. at that. Panama. It is Panama. Okay. So yeah, That's some, right. Some players obviously are going to be missing this that one week of games. Okay. That's over with. Uh, you have uh, Club World Cup. I mean, that takes an entire club out of the equation. So, I'm not, not, I mean. Okay. But there's like over 20 teams in MLS now. You're basically talking about two to three players per team on average. Especially when you talk about the, for Copa, yeah, even. Missing. If, even if you went for that route, yeah. So, quick crying. You got yeah. 30 players 30 on players. your roster. And you don't have to worry about them playing in Open Cup because only eight teams are participating in that. Right. So, I don't know. They're, they're, again, they're they're trying to make a mountain out of molehill when it comes to this congestion. I mean, everybody has to deal with this worldwide. Everybody's got international games. Everybody's yep. got cup. There's like four or five different cups going on in England at any given moment. And if you're playing those, then you're also playing Champions League too. Yeah. Right, and you might, you, might, Europa, you might be wherever, you know. You might be in the, the uh, uh, Club World Cup, too. We've seen that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's it's a lot of games. But it's not something you made any better. That's why you, ro- that's why you rotate players. It's not something you made any better by creating another cup, another league's cup that only 4% of anybody cares well, about, apparently. That's, that's funny you bring that up because uh, <clears throat> per the league's cup – only two teams will play the maximum of seven leagues cup games in any given year, and that's far from certain uh, that both of those teams will be from MLS. Conversely, some of the teams will only play twice if they're unable to get out of their league cup group. Did well, Rodriguez just make our argument? <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> you could be out of the uh, Open oh. Cup in one game. Yeah, that. that- this is our argument, and he literally just made it. Thank you. You're yeah, seriously. <laughs> I don't know. This yeah. This guy, I think he went off. He went off script. I think uh, the guy was like, uh, "Yeah, you know, there, there's gonna be uh, some teams that'll have to play seven leagues cup." He's like, "Oh, well, actually, it's no guarantee that an MLS team will actually play all seven games. I think and most most of them might actually lose out in two games. I think if you looked at the average of how many games every MLS team typically plays in the U.S. Open Cup? It's two games. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yep. So, again, it's excuse after excuse after excuse, and it all comes back down to control and money. Money, 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 money. Little piggies. Little piggies. Next Pro is another huge investment that our ownership is making that drives dividends to the U.S. national team pool system. Prove it. Hasn't yet. <laughs> Give me a break. You guys I mean, just start at Next Pro. If you're talking about the academies, okay, but that's not yeah. what he said. Yeah. Um, speak, speaking of that, I, I saw somebody somebody posted some. Uh, I think it was Larry actually posted it, where uh, U.S. Soccer actually talked about how the academies can take. Uh, you know, they they uh, the academies have done their job as far as building a product, and they mentioned a couple of players. Well, they mentioned uh, San Diego Surf with Luca De La Torre. I'm like, wait a second. How yeah. can you possibly claim that one? <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> totally wrong. Um, so he feels the same way that prohibiting the next pro team players from a meaningful competition that is supposed to unify, it feels archaic and simply wrong. Archaic. Okay, so the rest of the world are archaic. I noticed today. That in the women's beaker tournament in in Holland, Ajax, the big girl team, played Ajax too in like the semifinals of the tournament today. And Ajax, the big girl team, won. 
So, but name me other major leagues that have two teams playing in it. Mm -hmm. If you were not such a dumb fuck and left MLX next pro teams in USL for the minor fee you were asked to pay to stay in USL, they could compete. <laughs> or maybe you could yeah. change the name of the teams somehow, find a way to, to, to stay in. Um, the actual competition, but otherwise, if they're legit, just two teams, you can't. It's it's it, it, this is gonna be it's gonna be a fascinating uh, back and one two punch here coming up here. But he says the way the system is running because they talk about the next pro. The way the system is, it's archaic and it needs a change. Well, that's funny that he mentions that because let's talk about all, this and then I'll talk about the actual uh, publication that he talks about here. In the end. Okay. We also think it's unfair that only Division One teams are obligated to play. No one else is obligated to play. Rodriguez said. Garber emphasized that point, saying he felt that folks didn't realize that. It should be noted, however, that the U.S. Open Cup is also a mandatory point for Division Three men's and women's leagues in the latest published revised dated March. 17, so March 17, 2023, U.S. Soccer updated their requirements for divisional mm -hmm. soccer. Mm -hmm. And U.S. Open Cup, actually, the uh, uh, CONCACAF, uh, any CONCACAF competition is required by Division One and Division Two of men and women. Mm -hmm. So that means that if, if a Division Two team happens to make the CONCACAF Champions League, they're required to go and play those games. Mm -hmm. Same thing with U.S. Soccer. or mm -hmm. Sorry, MLS. But Division Three is required to play in the U.S. Open Cup. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mention Concacaf uh, uh, competitions. Says U.S. Open Cup. Sure. So I think we talk. We talk about the plant that got placed at the, at the head of U.S. Soccer. Mm -hmm. This got changed not too terribly far after that occurred. Yeah. And it's including Division Three has to participate in U.S. Open Cup now. Derek, you know who's a Division Three uh, uh, league? Nisa, Miss Nisa uh, three, Nisa's three. I think so, yeah. USL League One is three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? MLS Next Pro is a Division Three league. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So they're saying that Division Three leagues must participate. They talk about going into negotiations for the future years. This is only for this season, Derek. This is only for this season. And it's going to make sense for the greater good moving forward. I think the greater good moving forward is going to be the exclusion of MLS clubs. And you're going to see MLS Next Pro teams in the U.S. Open Cup. Sounds like it. And it seems like it's all leading up to that. Yeah. So is... here's the here's the bigger question. I mean, if like in the, ultimately – if a U if a, if a, if an MLS Next Pro team wins the US Open Cup, they're not required to participate in CONCACAF competitions, only the US Open Cup. So does that mean that automatically gets uplifted to the that club's uh MLS side? So if Colorado's next pro team wins the US Open Cup, does that mean that Colorado FC goes on to the CONCACAF Champions League? Yeah, we don't this know the speculating answer. my tinfoil hat, of course, but no, no, no. I mean, it's a good thing to think about. I don't think we have to worry about that. I think USL without any MLS, MLS teams will win that tournament every year, which is good well, for USL because they will then have a team in the CONCACAF champions. Now. Well, for yeah. now, we as we found as we found out, even by thank you, Larry, for bringing this up to us. But as we found out, there's actually no age limit anymore for MLS Next Pro. No, it could go. It used to be a U20 when it was announced and it was released first season, at least. It was a U23 with three overage players, right? Now they're claiming that there's no there's no age limit, so there how, isn't. How can we, uh, if, if this goes through, you're like, yes, USL should handedly beat the MLS next pro teams, especially if they're U23s, they will, but how long until that's no longer a overall U23? team for I don't, Bros. I don't know um that's a good question i think that currently um mls next pro teams their average age is 21 whereas the usl's average age is 26 so how much is that going to shift i do not know um unless you're getting paid more to play on an mls next pro team as a 27 year old 
than you could make playing in USL. No, I but know. I mean, I mean, you could be looking at that as an easier upward trajectory into MLS than US through USL. You, you how could. Often, how often does MLS really go and pillage players out of USL? It's not but very if, often. If you're 26 or 27, you're playing on the next pro team instead of the big boy team. You got a problem already. There's no, there's no salary for the uh, requirements for the MLS Next Pro team either. I'm, I'm, I'm well, there's saying. no cap though. Yeah, there there is, crazy. there is a cap. So no, they said there's no, there's no salary cap. They're not going to spend that much, dude. You no, know true. that. True. They're not going to spend a ton of money. I agree. They agree. Yeah. But so it's, it's going to stay this way for a while because yeah. the whole point of Next Pro is to develop young players. That's what they. That's what they tell us. Well, that's what they tell us. Only <laughs> the only team that has an abundance of overage players, most of them have one. We're head, of the, we're, head, we're head of the we're head of the curve, Derek. The only team is Chicago. <laughs> they have like seven overage players on their MLS Next Pro team, where most of the other teams have two, three, one. Um, but most don't have a whole lot of players over the age of twenty three. It's so. just there's there's a lot of things adding up, and again, it could be it could just be coincidental. Uh, and maybe you maybe MLS really does want to, you know, once this year goes bye bye. But then the next year, what we have Gold Cup, we still have Nations League games, <clears throat> um, we still have Concacaf Champions League. I mean, the the schedule and you still have Leagues Cup. The schedule is not going to be getting any any lesser. And then, well, we know. already talked about the solution to this. This is not difficult. You got thirty man roster. Play yes, we know. We know this. Play the 15 guys who never get to see the goddamn field. Play those guys. Send so that, put, put them yeah. on a plane and send them to go play your 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 open cup games. But that does, that doesn't benefit that doesn't benefit MLS in their argument that it's you know it's congestion. It's all about control of money. Well, how does that benefit them to send 15 players that don't get to see playing time to benefit a, a cup that they can't control? So yeah, well they're not they're not. I mean. That that's that was the one thing. If, if Herc and and Sev in their interview with with uh, Nelson Rodriguez, they would have just flat out said, "Hey, you guys have a thirty man roster. Like two thirds of it might see some playing time throughout the season. I mean, there's always a starting eleven. Then there's some subs because of injuries. It happens. But there's always going to be ten to twelve players that will never see the play. will never see the pitch. Right. Yep. Why it's couldn't you just send them? And what would Nelson say? Oh well. Well, there's injuries and players are going to be abroad at these tournaments where they're going to get playing time now. And, Not in your bottom uh, 15. They aren't. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah. So he would have lost that one. And I mean, again, tough shit is what I'm saying to Garber and, uh, Rodriguez. I'm not. I'm not. I'm still. I'm just not sold that U.S. soccer really has an agenda to push back against them less at this point. I don't know if they have the power either. Oh, the money. The money is obviously in that side to uh, play ball. Um, we saw it with the, <sighs> the the field, the new field that or new complex that's going up in Atlanta. Yeah. So. All right. As we transition to the next segment, I should say today I'm drinking a uh, what's it called? Champagne Velvet. Uh, this mm. is by uh, Upland Brewery. It's uh, oh, a, a, nice rec- local. a recipe uh, from 1908. I've had this for a while. I did, forgot I had these in a, I, my closet. So when I moved out of my house to move here, my uh, my stepson, the older one, used to come over. We used to play video games a lot. And he brought beer over, right? And he hated this beer. And he's like, you just keep it and have it. Well, I hated it too. <laughs> so you got a booze and you just want to crack it open? No, I, I found them the other day and I'm like, you know what? Let's give this a try. I'll give it a try on the show. It's really not that bad, but I think I it's better out of straight out of the can than it is in a glass. I'll be honest with you. I had one the uh, other night on a in a glass. I thought it tastes like garbage. The other problem is it's only 5%. Like I'd have to drink like 15 of these to get a buzz. Mm. Anyhow, take sorry. All right. Stop well, b- b- bouncing into our final topic, the uh, the main topic, US men's national team lead roster <sighs> announced. I wanted to start this off because it does have the uh, the roster, is I wanted to talk about uh, some uh, Stu Holdenisms. Oh, okay. What did Stu say stupid now? <clears throat> um, here's the US men's team. Gotta say it like Stu. Here's the U.S. men's national team roster for the upcoming Match Nations League. 
Hope Johnny gets the start in the semifinal in a midfield with Musa and McKinney and interested who gets the start at number nine. No room for Vasquez, Pifok, or Haji. Thought Vasquez has done enough at Monterey, but doesn't get call yet. You thought he did enough? So somebody's got to stay home. Isn't it weird? Isn't it weird that when this when this when this uh, this uh, roster is going to be announced, that every single pundit that has covered MLS at any given moment, or just in general for U.S. soccer, all of a sudden they all peddled out the the Vasquez topic. I, I'm yeah. not taking anything away from Vasquez. He's scoring goals in bucket loads, and I love and it. Props to him. He's doing a good job. And I would, I would love for him to get another opportunity. It's just not going to happen in Nations League. Yeah, a guy, who, a guy who really has limited playing time under Burhalter, only in Gold Cup. So. You're gonna, you're gonna rip um, Pepe off the team. Well, that's kind of that's kind of Herc's question, right? Herc goes, uh, uh, "Who would you, uh, who would you?" Uh, who'd Vasquez replace? Exactly. Who you take? And from? Stu says Pepe. With a question mark. Pepe? That's not like Pepe. He said Pepe? Question mark? Yeah, like, Pepe. that's that's like I had a teacher once who would ask uh, the students questions. And if they answer, like, uh, uh, South America? He said, are you asking a question or are you answering the question? Yeah. Right? So, uh, exactly. Pepe question mark means, Stu, you don't know what the you're talking about because you know it will be hard to justify taking Pepe off because let me ask you this would Brandon Vasquez do you think he was pursued by PSV one of the best teams in Holland my answer is no he wasn't he was pursued so, by Munchen Gladbach though supposedly yes we don't know how hardcore that pursuit was. Yeah, well, I mean, it, they they placed they made a bid for his services, and uh, since we don't know how much money it was, if it was an underbid. Here's twenty five bucks. Gonna go to Vasquez. Yeah, <laughs> give us Vasquez for twenty five bucks, and here's a pint of beer. Um, so we don't know the details of that. Um, so maybe he could have gone to Gladbach. I think he would have done fine there. Of course, now they've replaced whatever he would have brought with Pepe. I mean, with uh, Pifak. Yeah. So. Um, but we'll never know, right? We just know he's kicking ass at Monterey, um, mm -hmm. which is great. It's great. But I think that's not quite enough yet. It's great. But it's not something that's going to make me say, well, Pepe needs to not be on the team, even though he's yeah. one of our big consistent scorers and one of the players who truly understands how to play Greg's nine, whatever that is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right. Uh, but you're not uh, wrong. No, Greg, Greg's Greg's nine is just another holding midfield, is what it is. It's how it looks like it. It's all it is. But you know, Jesse Marsh said the same thing two shows ago. On uh, what's sure. the name of that? That's show? What I'm saying, not, not taking anything away from him, he's doing he's doing what he needs to do right now. Right, he's playing for his new club. He's scoring goals. Yeah, it's just it's Nations League finals. I mean, you're not going to take some. You're not going to take a look at the roster. The only new person on this roster really is going to be the goalkeeper. Uh, Drake Calendar, yeah. that's not new, new, but I mean he's he's been included in a couple of windows, but relatively new comparison. I, I got to throw this out there though, um, sure. the call it what you want, Jesse Marsh stuff. You know he's been asked some pretty detailed questions about what he would do or blah blah how he would line up, blah blah blah. One thing I've never heard come out of his mouth that we will ask Jimmy on Monday is how come he never says yes? I would be more flexible. I wouldn't run a system because that whole topic came up and he just talked circles around it, but he never took on the question mm. about Greg's system and his own system. So I still have not heard Jesse March say, if I took over the U S men's national team, I would not be a systems guy like Greg. Okay. That's what I want to hear. Come out of his flapping lips. All right. And the name of their show should have a much better, song that goes along with the opening by the way because it's call it what you want so it could be call it what you what you what you want they could what use like want. a Be yeah. beastie boys thing there all right um so goalkeepers yeah nothing to talk about there no news well i mean the one, again uh i think conversing with a bunch of people when this got announced is people like yeah i'm not surprised by anything but like, yeah the, there's only there's no big surprises here because there's only one goalkeeper and one field player that was in contention for possibly being a surprise right the rest of the team writes itself right there are no surprises 
I know that was Colin, Colin's comment about us whenever we were predicting teams for the last, the last couple of windows. It's like, <laughs> oh, you guys sound like you're from chat GPT. You know, I'm just like, yeah, that's because the, the team writes itself in right now. Yeah, exactly. We're not, we're not going to mix match it up right now. <laughs> the only thing we got wrong in our prediction was Aronson. We really yeah. thought Aronson. I would really, make, yeah. I think, I think, I think I convinced you on that too. Yeah. Because of the boner that Greg has for, Aronson, we yeah. really thought he's going to make the team. Otherwise, I think we got ninety nine percent of this right. Yeah, um, we were torn between Drake and uh, Gaga. Um, I assume that maybe Gaga, simply because there's no guarantee that he's going to get released for the Olympics. Well, that's but, all meaningless though, because third goalkeeper and they're not playing true. anyhow. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's okay to fuck that one up. Um, as far as uh, the other uh, surprise that we didn't get right would be Mark McKenzie. And that's because we thought CC, oh, yeah. CCV was healthy. And yeah. even if CC wasn't healthy, we thought Trusty would finally get a call-up. And that is one of the snubs, right? Yep. That's a snub. I'm sorry. But McKenzie, McKenzie, a lot of people say, well, I haven't watched many games McKenzie's played this season. I have. Because for whatever odd reason, ESPN carries a lot of the Gank games. Yeah, a you, lot. Can, you, can, you can watch that, but you can't watch freaking Norwich ever. No. Norwich you can't watch, but Gank... They're on there quite a bit. Um, so I probably watched six games of his this season. And I have to say, it's been a roller coaster. He's been relatively good in what I would consider be a relatively playing a lot of relatively weak ass teams, teams that are really no better than MLS teams. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, he's not always great, right? Um, and I guess that's part and parcel of being a center back sometimes, but. I don't know. I would have taken Trusty. I think he's proven that he could play at the highest level, even though he essentially plays for a championship team in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. He's had some really good games. Yes, he's had some bad ones too because his team sucks. So he's going to look bad on occasion too. Yeah. Um, but I thought he earned it. Um, and I don't think McKenzie did, but that's okay. I don't think McKenzie's playing anyhow. And I really don't think Trusty would have played if he – ended up on the squad either so in some ways um probably not espn plus shows the big belgian teams yeah so gank was a big belgian team last year this year they're not so good now granted they've lost a lot of players in the transfer windows well, they probably so, have these games lined up after the last season in so they're like oh well, they're big and, and it's kind of lined up. it's kind of weird because over the years who's big in belgium has changed right it was mm -hmm. anderlecht then for a while it was standard liege then it was Genk last year, and uh, it seems to, like, rotate pretty regularly. Like, it's not always the same team wins in Belgium, which is nice, actually. It's not Germany, where it's Bayern Munich for a decade straight, where you're just like, why even watch the Bundesliga outside of there being Americans in it? Because we know who's going to win this damn thing. Well, that's changed yeah. this year, and I'm so excited by that. I'm so excited that Leverkusen is battling – because, well, mm -hmm. first of all, Leverkusen's never really been this close before. That's why they're called Neverkusen. So, um, outside of that, no no surprises, right? None yeah. except the defender, for McKenzie. The defender, again, defenders were pretty clear. Uh, I know some people are questioning whether why Loon has even included. And that's somebody you could bring it off and bring in somebody, uh, another person, some Ross on the pitch, maybe another wing or whatever. And, yeah. and I mean, the thing is, is I don't want to have to sit there and rely that our backup right back option is also our backup left back. And I'm not specifying who our backup right back is. Cause obviously in Jamaica game, Scally is going to be our starter. Right. And if wind wasn't there, we'd have <laughs> no backups at all to our backs. Now, of course, players could fill in in a pinch. Sure. I mean, you could I throw mean, out, you could have thrown out Trusty at that point, or even Richards out wide if you need to. Hell, Moose has played right back this season yep. for AC Milan, for Christ's sake. Wea, do, they, do they play back or do they play wing backs? No, he actually played a uh, right back, just standing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to grow on that then, Larry. Larry brought that up. So, um, you know, I think you could do that. I'm sorry about you eating yeah, we could put Adam, we, could, we could put Adams back there. He's played a left and right back. Right yeah. Back, He's played right back too. So it's not like, you know, in a pinch, you couldn't put somebody in there. The The real truth of the matter is Christopher Lund's probably not playing, but five minutes in this whole team. I don't even think that Jedi never comes off the pitch unless he's injured. Exactly. So <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's whoever got screwed here, whether it be Dewan Jones or um, uh, I'm trying to think of who Jack else. Moore? 
Shaq Moore was definitely not screwed. And uh, I'm <laughs> thinking the – Jones, I don't think he was screwed either. Fossey, not- for instance, not healthy enough to play. Paredes isn't really a left back. He's a left winger. I hate the fact that he's listed as a defender because then everybody's posting him as a defender in there. I'm just like, he, he doesn't play left back. No, he hasn't played left back or even left wing back like but one time in his whole yeah. career with Wolfsburg. So yeah. look, can we stop making him a defender? He's just not. Um, All right. So where he might have played more left wing back than that, but he's still primarily a go forward guy. He's not bad on defense. He could fill in. Not saying he couldn't, but if he's on this roster, he's probably coming as a winger, not a mm-hmm. back. Um, although you can do anything to anybody if you really want to. You could make goddamn Sergeant play goalkeeper if you really have to. Um, Tyler Adams um, was the other one we talked about earlier. And, you know, we've already laid out what we thought of that. Um, I, you think maybe he should have just stayed anyhow. I think, yes. well, now that he played, fuck it, just bring well, him. Everybody, in the, uh, a good number of the chat were simply saying, like, you know, like he's the, he's the captain and he's the vibes guy. You got to bring him back in. Um, I understand, but if he didn't know, play in that last game, Brett, I would have been with you one hundred percent. I don't know. My, my 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 take still is he's still recovering. He's been gone for over a year now, like legit injured for over a year. Um, well, I personally would have preferred to have moved Malik Tillman from the forwards list down to midfield, so he's competing with Geo as a an attacking mid option, which he's probably still is. Quite frankly, he is. yeah. And then instead, I would have brought in Wright as a wing, as an actual wing depth. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> right <laughs> I right. think that would have worked just fine. But I think if you can bring Tyler Adams, who hasn't played for us since the World Cup, if you can get him back in and get the vibes, as people say, going again. And he played 20 minutes, and the physios and all the testing they did on um, Tyler Adams at Bournemouth say he could play up to 45 minutes. Then he'll come, and guess what? He probably will. He'll probably play 10 minutes here and 15 minutes there. That would be my guess. Hmm. And remember, we only have a double pivot now. So there's only two midfielders available at a time who can play in those two spots. So that's going to limit how many of these guys are going to get any minutes in the first place? Because you're probably going to start with Cardoso and McKenney would be my guess, or excuse me, Musa and McKenney, because I don't know if Greg trusts Cardoso yet enough to yeah. start them in a big game like that. that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And so then you bring Cardoso in. Um, and I, I would probably guess that um, in that double pivot, Luca De La Torre doesn't play a minute in this upcoming. And I don't think that, if Tyler Adams plays, it'll be spare minutes at the end. So I think he won't, he's not going to be, they're not going to risk him to injury. It's, it's, it's interesting because in the uh, preliminary roster, Gio was listed as a forward and Malik Tillman was listed as a midfielder. Now they've flip flopped in the actual roster here. Yeah. I wonder, I'd be, I'd be curious, especially with the inclusion of Adams. And you look at the rest of the midfielders there, you basically have four overall box-to-box midfielders. You have Tyler Adams, who plays as a six, and you have Gio, who's, who's an attacking. What are the odds that Greg might fiddle fuck and go back to the uh, 4-3-3 with, uh, with the single pivot? I'd say there's a good 30% to 40% chance he does that. Because Greg's going to Greg. Remember, Greg only, like, with pressure, went to a 4-2-3-1. Had BJ and Hudson not done it so successfully, I really mm-hmm. don't think he would have switched to a 4-2-3-1. Four, four, I think he would have stuck to his 4-3-3, three, three, the same sad-ass 4-3-3 three, three that the women play. All right? Now, they've, they're they trying to switch things up. The women are moved to a 4-2-3-1 as well. I mean, you, you got to be a special team to really control the field properly with a 4-3-3. Three, three. And mm-hmm. Give the the top the players in the top four some f- sort of feeling of freedom. So maybe mm-hmm. we'll we'll see that. I don't think we're going to see the kind of freedom I'm hoping for because that's not Greg. We saw freedom with BJ. We saw freedom of movement. We saw creativity. We we're not going to see that. I don't think out of Greg. I would like to see it, and that'll know let me know things have changed. But uh, we'll see. Um, and then. The forwards, I mean, is not 
surprising. And I see people saying, well, Tim Way ain't playing either. Leave him off. Um, who was saying this? Oh, no chance Jesse Marsh. Jesse Marsh. Um, and, you know, I love the Charlie Davies, and we were going to play these chunks for Jimmy tonight, but we'll save it for Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. But I love Charlie. He's like, he's so passionate. He's like, I don't know what you guys are watching <laughs> because, okay, Gio's not playing. Okay, Way is not playing that much. But what they have brought to the U.S. men's national team and their levels, especially if you're talking about Gio, and you're comparing him to somebody like Aronson? Are you kidding? Are you joking? He's a mile above creativity-wise. Of You can't leave a player that's that good off. I don't care if he hasn't played for his Nottingham Forest team. Don't yeah. care. Just don't care. Like, there was a time where Polistic wasn't playing for Chelsea. He came and played with us, and he played great. So it can be done. There are some players that are so undeniably skilled and so undeniably good, you have to bring them. Although there are numb nuts all yeah. over X who don't think that Rain is that well, good. Wea would have Wea would never would have played for the United States national team because he's never been a consistent starter for any club. Nope. Even in back in the days of Lil, he was still, you know, he'd he'd start some games, but then go spells of not playing or maybe bit minutes or playing out uh, right left wing back. Right. So Maybe he never would have got called up. Maybe that's the thing. But the argument if you I use that against, standard, yeah. yeah. The argument I say against that is that well, they're like, well, he's not getting much playing time. We have somebody like Paredes who's getting consistent playing time. I'm like, well, the difference is there's a level of talent gap between the two players. Yeah, and have you watched Paredes? I've watched almost every single game he's played this season. Yeah. You let me know when he has outside of the handful of goals and assists, small handful of goals and assists he's had this season how big of an impact player he is for Wolfsburg. He hasn't been. He's not bad. He's at Bundesliga quality enough to start, but I don't see him. He doesn't make an impact on the games. He just, he's mm -hmm. had one or two games in our Yanks of reports. When he had a good game, I said it. I said, man, he kicked ass all game long on the left. He totally dominated the other left winger and the left back or the right back and right winger of the other team. Mm -hmm. And I said it when it happened, but I, since then I haven't been able to say that about any game I've watched since then that Paredes has played. He's just been yep. there. He's a he's a passenger on the field. Yep. And in contrast, we're talking about the difference between Gio and Malik Hillman in yep. that sense. There is still, I mean, people people will bring up the fact that Malik is still in very inconsistent when it comes to big games against big teams. Um and he's, he said that mantra around him ever since he was over at uh, with Rangers, and it's still it still chimes up every now and then uh, playing with PSV. Uh, but the overall difference in talent gap between the two, while there is a noticeable one, I when you if you were to play Malik at the attacking mid, it's not going to be that massive of a drop off, if any, right. not massive of a drop off. There'll be a little bit of a drop off as far yeah. as just your t uh, skills concerned. But Malik is going to be sharper because he's been playing consistently more or less yep so i that's one of those issues where i it's like i can see both and i wouldn't be opposed to seeing malik start i wouldn't throw a hissy fit if he started over reyna in that cam spot especially after watching some of the magical things he'd against dortmund this week hmm. um i mean literally he was trapped by three players at one point uh dortmund players yep. in his own end Des got him the ball in a really bad spot and he just dribbled around him. He just dribbled through all three of them. Bye. See you later. Um, so he's a special player. There was no doubt in my mind that Tillman is a special player. Um, and that he's just getting started, too. That's the exciting part. What is his ceiling? I'm not even sure I really know Malik's ceiling yet. Mm -hmm. I don't. Because he seems to do surprising things to me. I see new things from him every game I watch. Now. He's missed some opportunities this season. Yeah, that's frustrating, I'm sure, for him. But generally, he is has become and worked himself onto a very good PSV team as a starter. And that's what he is now. He's a starter. Yeah. So I know people are like, oh, he's not really a starter. Well, no, he's a starter now. Um, this is Jamaica's roster for their uh, Jesse Negron from 199. Marsh's takes a bad Glad he's not the coach. I know, Jesse. That's what I say, too. Or Jesse. Or uh, 
forgot. Yeah, no, the more the more man, the more he's talking, man. The more I'm like, thank God. Uh, uh, yeah, Still probably would have been, been such a toss up between rosters. Whereas where we talk about Berhalter's rosters being very consistent. Yeah. With changes being a little slow, maybe a little too slow sometimes. I feel like with Jesse's, it would just be haphazard, like, ah, we're gonna pick this name from Matt. We're calling him in, we're calling him in, we're calling him in. You know, it really it seems to me sometimes watching Jesse that he doesn't really know the whole player pool. I might be wrong, but he comes off as not being knowledgeable on the whole player pool. Mm-hmm. That's fine, um, Yusuf. Um, all right. Um, Lebanon Yank says this is Jamaica's roster for their Nations League game against the U.S. men's national team. No Ethan Pinnock. Oh, that's going to hurt. No Leon Bailey? Yep. Oh. Apparently no. he uh, he disobeyed uh, uh, curfew last time. <laughs> and no Damari Gray? Man, that is going to hurt. Mm-hmm. There are zero zero excuses to get a strong. Wow. No, Leon Bailey's been amazing this year for Aston Villa. So they got Blake, who we know will start. And then, uh, you know, going down this list, there's some good players, but boy, you're missing some big names all yeah. of a sudden. Big names. Damian Lowe's a good player, but let me see. Bobby Cordova Reed will always be a handful. Um, so will, um, the guy's name I can barely pronounce, Lati Baudrier. Um, but yeah, that hurts. Corey Burke still making this team. Um, Kamari Gray, Shamar Nicholson. Okay. Yeah. It's not a bad, still not a bad team. No. It's not a bad team at all, but you're missing some of your best guys. Your I mean, best that, guys. I mean, it, we, we lost... <laughs> We lost uh, <coughs> Pulisic and Wea on one window, and that that completely changed how we looked. Yeah, listen, lo- losing Leon Bailey is like losing Pulisic if you're Jamaica. Sure, it really Actually, is. Somebody, somebody made somebody made uh, or uh, Jamaica's uh, their soccer one of their uh, somebody somebody who covers Jamaica stuff made mm-hmm. the comparison of their of their season so far, and they're they're pretty close. I think Leon Bailey has a couple more goals and assists or whatever, mm-hmm. but. They're pretty. They're pretty comparable. Comparable, yeah, yeah. I'd say so. Mikel Antonio is going to be there. He's always a handful, and uh, so I mean, listen, they still got great players. Yeah. Not saying they don't, but you're missing some great guys. There's no doubt, and Pete's right. Those are some huge losses for them. Um, mm-hmm. So some of them looks like they did it to themselves, just to blur any reasons and suspension. So. Yep. All right, so there's that. Um, you want to talk about some of the other uh, snubs real quick? Uh, people said Maloney was a snub. No, he's not. He's injured. Maloney's injured. Um, be really clear about that. Um, uh, I think Wright's a big snub. Wright's a snub. But we we uh, you, you end up losing him when you brought in Adams, quite frankly. Right. Um, right, right. Um, PFOC, no. I don't know if I could call that a snub yet because if Pete Falk were kicking ass a little bit more and I realized Gladbach's not a great scoring team this season and they've been having trouble scoring goals. So it's not all his fault. Uh, but I think he needed to do a little bit more to get his name on the sheet. Um, CCV's injured. Let's be very clear. We already talked about Vasquez. Slonina is not a snub. He's probably being held for U23s so would be my guess. If if Chelsea let him go or Oipen let him go, but Chelsea will mm-hmm. be back. Chelsea, that Brooks, it's not a snub. So let's just get that over with. Do not bring up Brooks as a snub anymore. He's not there because Berhalter doesn't like him. It's just as simple as that. We brought up the Honduras locker room scene. We told you shit was thrown. We told nope. you Brooks had a an hissy fit in the locker room and it got in Berhalter's grill. It's done, folks. He is not playing. And when he's listed 59 out of 60, you're basically that's just a even it's an insult to John Brooks, actually, that he was listed. I would, I would take it if I was Brooks, I'd take that as an insult because I'm like, this is this is clearly done on purpose. Yeah, because you know he went got the list, right? Somebody sent him the list and he went started at the top and with his finger and he went. 
Cody. Where maybe am I? maybe on the maybe on the B list. Maybe where? B list. Oh no, nope, not there. I'm still not. Oh my God, where am I? I'm on the C list. I'm fifty ninth. So. Fifty ninth. When are we gonna finally hear from Brooks? Jesus, because he's been so good about this. He has not publicly said a word. But at this point, he's got to be frustrated because listen, who if and this is something people don't consider. If Tim Ream goes down with an injury, who's playing the ball out of the back for the United States men's national team? Who are you going to rely on? Who? Richards? He doesn't do that. That's not his thing for Crystal Palace. He can do he can get it out to your wingers nice and solid. I think we're simply going to lose the long ball aspect of the game. Yeah, you're going to lose the long switching fields long ball because no one Give else, it to Weston. Give it to Weston. No one else can consistently <laughs> do it. So, yeah, it's going to be Musa coming back to grab the ball off of someone's feet. And people yep. don't realize like this. They're like, oh, no, they think it's just about defending. It's not just about defending. It's about distribution. Why do you think the whole World Cup – that whoever played alongside Reem barely touched the ball and barely distributed the ball. They all gave it up to Reem, and Reem mm -hmm. played it out of the back, even if it was yeah. safe pass out left. But a lot of the times, it was switching fields from left to right. Long bomb passes right on the dime. No other center back we can do that can do that except for John Brooks on this team. So yeah. It's a loss once Reem goes, unless somebody else figures out how to do that, especially from the left side, with a left foot going from left foot across field to the right side of the field. No one else is doing it. Mm -hmm. No one else can do it. You tell me who else can do it. No one can, because no one else does it consistently, period. And nobody else plays through, through balls, through the middle, uh, bypassing a line better than Tim Ream does out of our center backs. Now, yep. Rich, Richards can do a little of that, but... Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was thinking about this recently. We always, <coughs> Every match is always like uh, when we talk about Brooks, you always have uh, some people are like, oh, he's, he's still our best center back option. Uh, other people will be like, oh, but I mean, look at this game. This air right here resulted in the goal. But you know what we don't see from everybody else on all of the other center, center backs is them, and them pinpointing that specific moment. It's always like, oh, he had an error. Well, it was a bad game. But, I mean, yeah. he was okay the rest of the game. Yep. Whereas Brooks could, have, Brooks could have, like, a great game the entire game, but have one flub that results in a in a uh, goal 30 seconds later and be like, aha, look at that. Yeah, we've – on the Yanks Abroad reports, we've called him out when he's had a bad game. Yeah. And well, I mean, there, there, having... there are people that actively look for those flubs. Oh, yeah, they do. Use that as an excuse. But if I went through all Trusty's tape, I could find the same. If I went through all of McKenney's tape, yes. I could find the same. Well, I can less, make on, less on McKinney. Less on McKinney. McKenzie. Oh, if McKenzie. I went through McKenzie's tape, I could find a, a bunch of mistakes this year at Gank. Trust me. And I could make a highlight reel of McKenzie. Even CCV had some bad times in the Champions League. Sure. You know? And I could point those out. Um, you could make a little highlight reel of those things. You could do it. Especially if you go back two or three seasons and put them all together, you can make like a two minute. Mm -hmm. You're playing center back, you're going to get scored on. That's just how it works. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sometimes it's going to be your fault. But, you know, I understand that there's a problem with Brooks and his speed. But if you're telling me Tim Ream is faster than John Brooks, you're smoking something because they're he's no slower than Tim Ream. And he's also really good at spatial awareness. Or else he wouldn't be playing for a Bundesliga team. I'm not that's even in the percent positive how much faster CCV is. Yeah, he's not the fastest of a foot either. Um, so yeah, I mean, listen, those who think Brooks as a backup to Ream would be a good idea, but there is one thing I will have to say that somebody said, and I think it was Jimmy. Jimmy said on the show, you could bring Brooks, but let's be really honest, if he doesn't start. He's gonna be a pain in the ass, and that's true. I He's feel like I, I feel like I feel like at this point, after missing out on a couple of years of, of ball at this point, that if Brooks got brought back, I feel like even he would have to assume that he's not going to be starting that immediate, immediately. You would think so, Brett, I and I hope think, hope but... you would be right. But that is a good but point. I agree. I, I agree. I agree with Jimmy on that too. I mean, the fact that he might he, that could be an issue. 
Yeah, it could be because that wasn't the issue in the past. That mm -hmm. was the issue in the past when Zimmerman would start over him. Mm -hmm. And he would be kind of a plague in the locker room. He'd be pissed when he was pulled at halftime at Honduras. Mm -hmm. Pissed. Um, he considered himself at that point at his age to be supposedly one of the leaders of the team. And he wasn't allowed to be the leader. So who do you all think is a better center back currently? Reem or Brooks? I would still say Reem. I, I I I'd personally take Reem, yeah. Reem's got better spatial awareness than even Brooks does. And there's just certain tricks um, that Reem knows. And he's a better, actually a better long distance passer than Brooks. I think he's more pinpoint. Although Brooks can do it, he does it well. He's just not as pinpoint and like well, he's, right on the mark as, as he's Green also is. a better. He's also a better communicator. He's a better co leader. Yep. On his club team, maybe not right now, where Bassey and and uh, Tosin have basically taken over the center back roles for Fulham. So it's way gonna more be, It's going to be hard for Reem to accept that, but he doesn't seem to be complaining to the press or going to the media or looking disappointed on the sidelines. He's just going about doing his role. And there's very likely if um, they're able to keep Tosin and Bassey for the next season, you could well see Tim Ream loaned or sold to an incoming Premier League team um, coming from the championship next season. I don't think he'll stick around if he knows his, his first – place spot is gone i think Reem some, will uh, leave he will I leave like some, i feel like there's some teams that are just barely staving off relegation that might be able to use a, a experienced center back oh yeah and believe me there's some there's some teams in the championship that could definitely use some help on defense mm -hmm. so um yeah we'll see what happens there uh this is going to be really unpopular but i got to speak my truth stan i hope this is good buddy i don't, I don't like that phrase my truth i don't either He's been coaching college soccer yeah, uh, basketball too long. <laughs> sorry, sorry, man. We're busting your balls a little when bit. When you say my truth, I just it sounds like you're just saying, well, just say my opinion. It's an opinion. I'm gonna say this opinion. It's not your truth. Listen, truth is truth. You don't get to have your own. All yeah. right. Either it's either true, two plus two is four, or it's not true. Okay. Yeah. It's either a fact that you can document, but you don't get your own truth. That's not how this works. Sergeant, uh Oh, better than Ballo takes are the same as Aronson being better than Pulisic. No, they're not. No. Well, for no. one, for one, nobody's saying. I don't think anybody out there is saying that Sargent is a better striker than Ballo. Now, you and I talk about how Sargent is a better fit in Berhalter's system than Correct. Ballo. Right. I think I think Sargent is a better overall striker, like more well-rounded. Right, but he doesn't have the highs that Ballo have. True. He doesn't, doesn't have the speed Ballo has. True. Um, but he's an all-around really good player. I mean, who has the higher ceiling? I don't know. Probably Ballo. I probably was Ballo on that front, too. But. Yeah, I mean, you don't know for sure. I mean, that's – Ballo's early on. It's his second season in France. Let's just see how that goes. But, you know, he obviously has some amazing abilities. Um, he's got – a really good eye for when to um, go for a through ball that's passed to him. So, and make himself available for through balls. They're different players though. They're completely yeah. different players. And boy, I haven't seen anybody say that Aronson is better in Pulisic. For... Ooh, you missed you miss that. You missed, that, was, that was leading into that the was World years Cup. ago. That, not even years. That was like leading into the world cup, man. Yeah. That's years ago now. World that's Cup. true. That is years. <laughs> Time's flying, Brett. Um, it really is. A year and a half or so. And that's yeah. basically. Leverdad for one ninety nine. Thank you, brother. Uh, Jalen Neal may be the next playmaking center back post Ream. He could be if he can get healthy. Get healthy. That's key right there. Listen, the injury he had and the surgery he went through, that is no bag of candy. I can tell you that. Um, and what, from what I know, it's going to take him a while to come back. Like that was serious. That was a serious injury. And we've seen serious injuries debilitate players. So I, hopefully that's not what happens. So, um, anyhow, we like, uh, Stan. Yeah. It's not, it's not his real name. 
Obviously, he's on often on uh, the show Tech. with Tech. We've all been on the show at the same time. His yeah. name is his name is Adam. It's a good guy. I just I don't think those comparisons are fair. I think no. they're closer than that. Ballo has proven he can thrive at a top level. He is a better player if you watch both play. His game translates to top levels far better, and he has more goals and assists in eight U.S. Ma matches than Sargent has in the last 22 caps. That's not fair. Ballo has goals and assists in Canada. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sargent's goals and assists opportunities are rough. I don't think oh, he's had a whole, not really had a lot of opportunities so, for a long so time. I kind of wanted to pick this apart bit by bit here. Uh, Ballo yeah. has proven he could thrive at the top level. He had he's had one good season in, in league. Uh, and, 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 that, and that was that was following a uh, a poor season in the championship. And out of all the top five four leagues, France is certainly below Germany, uh, Spain, England. I'm sorry, Italy too. They're they're the fifth. So, like the teams at from mid table down in France, generally are pretty crappy. I'm sorry, they yeah. are. I mean, I'm sorry, I the Havre, uh, they're horrible. Yeah, uh, Ballo last season played with a team that really utilized his strengths, and he had a great season. Yep, hundred percent, hands down, not taking anything away from him. Sergeant hasn't come close to that in a, in a season at all. This is probably the closest, but he's missed half the season, right? And it's in the championship in comparison. So. Yes, he's had a great season, and he's in current season right now. He's faltered back. He's it's not a great season by him. He should have easily four or five more goals just from PKs alone. If the top twenty teams of the championship played the top twenty teams in France, uh, I'd say PSG would win. I'd say they're definitely the top French teams would win. But then once you hit like the mid middle and the, but I seriously don't think that. France is that much, the French division is that much better than the championship. I really seriously don't think it's that much better. I really don't. I think it's minimal at best. So saying that what Ballo's done in France is this magical thing and that what Sargent's doing in the championship, this lowly league, isn't magical or great. It's not fair. It's not fair to uh, Sargent, really. Well, and then... Yeah, following that up by saying that uh, Ballo's game translates to the top levels better. It depends on what team you're playing for. Exactly. And what's being required of you. Right. We're, fi we're finding out now, just in the same league, two different teams requiring two different things from Ballo, mm -hmm. and you're getting two different results. So, yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Are I mean, you playing a target striker, or are you playing a through-the-lane you know lane striker? Those are two totally different strikers. Mm -hmm. One's a speedster. So the other one can is a poacher, and the other one can play with his back to goal, which Balogun cannot do, all right, which Greg's nine requires, by the way. So, you know, I, I don't even want to really compare the two players because they're such different players. They're such different types of players. But there are teams that much would wrap, like if, if Fulham needed a new center forward, they wouldn't go out and get Balogun because he'd end up playing where? Because that's not what they do. They play a, mm. a target center forward, a big center forward. That's what they do in Fulham, for instance. So, no, Ballo would not thrive at Fulham, or he'd be thrown out wide because they don't play that me, way. This is going to lead me to my next point as far as the uh, the eight goals. Sorry, uh, he has more he has more goals and assists in eight matches than Sargent does in 22 caps. Taking us over to this comment here, Sargent flopped for the U.S., flopped in Bundesliga, was eh. terrible in the Premier League. His uh, level is championship, which is not good enough for the U.S. national team. Um, wow! I will say Wrong. the big four the big, times in a row. <laughs> the big dif the big difference here is the eight goals that Bello has is come from an established U.S. men's national team with everybody clicking together. Yeah, and you have Reina in the you have Raven Reina in the attacking mid role. Eighteen. Or so, like seventeen or eighteen of the uh, of the twenty two caps occurred from like the second window of World Cup qualifying and before. Right. Because Sergeant went about a year and some change without actually playing for the U.S. Men's National Team during that time frame. To use the example that uh, Placata has mentioned here, mm -hmm. uh, he ha he hasn't flopped for the U.S. 
he came yeah. into the World Cup and he is actually very vital as far as us being relatively successful. In the he was the best really center forward we played in the World Cup. On top of that, in Bundesliga, he was the leading goal scorer for a team that was arguably the worst Bundesliga worst team. team in decades. They Lord actually talked about this. Right. It was they the worst create chance. They created almost no chances. It was the worst Werder Bremen team in my lifetime. Let's put it that way. And he was the lead scorer on the team. How is that a flop? Like, uh, what's your yeah. definition of a flop? Yeah. Like, I don't get that. He was terrible in the Premier League. He never got to play his position in the yep. Premier League. So he played winger the whole time. He didn't and play out, center forward. And out wide, he actually played well. He did play he didn't, well. He didn't score. He scored a couple goals, but that was, that was it. And they were backed up the whole time yeah. in the Premier League. They're playing defense. 80% yeah. of the time, they had like so, 30% of the possession most of the games. So he play, ended up playing all kinds of defense. He worked yeah. his ass off. He wasn't terrible. Like, you didn't watch the games, dude. You didn't and watch we, Just we, admit it. Just and admit we, it. We actually, we actually covered this in uh, an earlier show, like a few weeks ago. Or not even a few weeks ago. But there, when uh, uh, that that podcast that was out that had the uh, – is, is, is uh, Sergeant the top striker in, in, champions, in championship. And people were like, obviously bad mashing, bashing him on his performance at EPL. But it was funny because all only Norwich fans came out and said, well, that wasn't really on Sargent. Our team sucked that year. Exactly. Norwich fans <laughs> say it. Yeah. That was a rough season for us. And keep in mind as well, he didn't get to play center forward. forward. Pookie did. Okay. He played a lot of left mid, right mid, and hell, even sometimes as a box to box. He played winger. Didn't play center forward. That's so it's not even his position. And his level no. is championship. We don't know that yet. And for you to say you know it sounds a little arrogant. We don't know that. Sergeant, Sergeant stands, stands are the worst. Are the worst. Oh, Unreasonable, blah, blah. never stop making excuses. <laughs> then you didn't pay attention to our show when he was in the Premier League. Because we hammered him. <laughs> all Der Derek, every week is like, Sergeant, you need to grow a sack. You need to request the ball. You need to fucking shoot the ball when you get the chance. But he didn't do that. We bashed him hardcore in that. We even said flat out that he doesn't deserve to be with the national team at that point. We did. We did. No, no. We, ha we hammered he, him, dude. We're not sorry, stands. You didn't, didn't watch. Well, we are kind of stands, but we definitely don't make, we don't just make excuses. No, we're no. not stands. Because of a kid playing up to his capability, we say it. We say it. And we hammered the crap. I hammered, in particular, the crap out of Sergeant for not, as you said, demanding the ball, stepping up, taking some leadership. And, demand, and, and basically not pulling a Mihailovic and being a ghost uh, when, when he got to play center forward. That's kind of what I felt he was doing sometimes. That's gone. That dude is over. That he's just a different sergeant on the field. You can say it, it happened after his baby was born or whatever. But believe me, if sergeant starts playing like crap, we will say so here. We will say so. We have no hesitation. I don't have any allegiance yeah, we, to Josh Sargent. We hold, we, hold back on, we hold back on nobody. We call everybody off when they play poorly. Yep. I mean, if you watch us on a regular basis, Placata, you would know that. We call people out when they play poorly. When Brooks had a couple bad games this season, I ripped him. I ripped him. So it happens. Um, and we will hold players accountable when they play like crap. And when McKenney was going through a rough time and we thought maybe he needed to get more fitness and lose some weight and get more focused. We said so at Leeds, but we also said that it wasn't all his fault at Leeds because Leeds just sucked. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like even though, even though you kind of stand for hoppy, at least now recently within like the last half year, we've been something like, Oh, okay. Well, da, 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 you know, that's almost a joke now. It, right? has, it really has turned to that. It's unfortunate, but, but yes. Hoppies turn into an unfortunate thing. And, um, you know, we'll support players. We're not saying anybody that we criticize is a bad person. It's they're just having or either a rough time or in some cases like Soto and Conrad, maybe they're just not very good. Or maybe there's something deeper, a mm -hmm. deeper problem or a deeper lying issue. But we're not I don't I don't think I'm a stand for anybody and I'm not standing for somebody calling me a stand. That's for sure. Because I have been brutal. I've been brutal against Aronson when he's been crap. Uh, Sergeant when he's been crap. I've been brutal on everybody who's been crap when they were crap. But when they got better, I admitted they got better. I'm not just going to sit here and say, well, they were crap. So they're always crap. That's not fair to them. And it's not fair to the show too either. Like mm -hmm. what, kind of, what kind of content will we be bringing 
if we didn't at least acknowledge the fact that Sargent's playing the best ball he's played all in his career so far. And he's the leader, one of the leaders of that team. And he's probably, and we're not even making this argument. Like people who watch the EP, uh, the championship are making the argument that he's the best striker in the championship. No, we're Barnes, not making the Barnes argument. even mentioned how he's the best player on Norwich. Barnes said it, his coach said it too. David Wagner said he's the best player on our team. And if he's not here, we're going to struggle without him. They're going to have to start scouting a new player because I doubt that he's going to be there much longer. I think even he's if, probably gone. Yeah. Yeah. The only, the only way that it's going to consist is if uh, Norwich moves up. And even then, I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, Placard, I hope you don't take it personally, but you know, we got to be real on this show. And if we disagree with you, we're just going to disagree. You're like, you're welcome to your opinion, and you can believe that if you want. Like, it's your opinion, dude. Yeah. You know, run with it. But if you bring your opinion and, to the show, just know if we disagree with you, we're gonna say so. Just don't take it. Yeah. If, if 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 you don't if you don't rate Sergeant, you don't rate Sergeant. That's fine. Yep. Um, but just like we were doing with Adam there, uh we 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 pick apart an argument, we state our opinion, what we think. And we like now, Adam. We like we, Adam. And we uh the, the big difference here is that you know, basically what we say is you know 99.9 percent .9 right all the time. So we've got that going for us. We got a track record, okay? Just wait till Jimmy comes on the show Monday. I have some I have some do doozies for him. I really do. I've saved some up, like some questions where he said some things. I'm I'm gonna bring them up because I think they're where you know where he does a little projection, you know, a little projection. Mm -hmm. Um, there's only one piece on this I want to play because the most of this honestly. These were some of the dullest questions you could possibly ask. That's because me... they've, they've been banning all the other reporters. Yeah, well, probably <laughs> true. It was the usual golf scenario, Blom, Carlisle, sure. McIntyre, Bond, Cannonwald, Shredder. Shredder asked the most quizzical question. And, you know, we love Brian. He's been on our show twice. We love him, but, like, I'm not, I don't care about talking about the Olympics right, right now. Like, that's mm. not what I'm interested in. I was surprised he brought up a U23 question. I'm like, I don't care. It's too early for me to give a shit yeah. about that. Probably um, just wanted to just ask something different. The, yeah. The I, same I, spiel that everybody else is. Like, what the hell am I going to ask about this roster? There's nothing to ask about. Yeah, I mean, when when Shredder comes up, I always expect a good question. Um, Goff brings up, brought up the Tyler question. That was good. Got that out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then the only time Geo came up, in the whole interview, was at um, 441. That's it. Nobody else brought him up. So is that what we're talking about? Yeah. This is the only time Stefan and Gio were mentioned in the... Uh, Stefan, I'm not worried about. Right, good. Is the decision not to call in Zach? Yeah, good question. You know, I actually spoke to Zach, and um, <clears throat> what we talked about was... You know, this being a, a bit longer road, you know, not just three three games so far in MLS. It's maybe 10, 15 games where he can really about start. Zach Stefan or Gio? There's some strong Stephen. performances. You know, we oh. expect him to be one of the top goalies in MLS. And, and when he is, there, there'll be an, an opportunity for him. So we're very clear with that. And, and he's been doing a, a decent job so far. And it's nice. Kind of. He's got a <laughs> uh, up, uphill battle here. I mean, we got one goalkeeper that's constantly being brought to the U.S. Men's National Team fold, and you have another goalkeeper that's being eyed by Arsenal. I mean, as far as MLS goalkeepers go, he's got a battle there to become yeah, the best U.S. Yeah, you got Celentano, uh, you got Calendar. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of good goalkeepers right now, so he's fighting an uphill battle there, and he plays for a really crappy team. So it's going to be a rough season for Zach Steffen because Colorado are poor. They're poor. So good luck to him there. And then he finally gets to Gio. To see him back um, performing. In terms of Gio and Matt, um, you know, it, it's always concerning when guys aren't getting regular minutes. But what we know about adapting to different leagues is sometimes it takes a while. And in Gio's case, you know, he's coming from the Bundesliga to a very high-tempo Premier League. Um, and his, his team in particular is um, very robust, very high, high energy on the counterattack. And, you know, we're not surprised that it's taking mm -hmm. him a little bit, but we believe that, you know, he'll be able to get it done in the end. I mean, I would have probably also mentioned how the, the limited time he's had there, he's never looked out of place or something yeah. like that. 
there may right. be some adjustment period and maybe he doesn't necessarily fit the mold of Forrest and that might be hurting him, but, but never talk about the knock though. You think somebody would, how bad is it? Yeah, somebody's gonna talk about you know, knock. how, how bad is the knock? Is it a bruise? Is it just a rash on his testicles? What, what's the problem? Why, why is he not made the lineups for Forrest in the last two games? So I don't know what a lot to hear that kind of question. Most of these questions were completely unchallenging questions. Um, I hate to say it because we know a lot of these people, and I don't like I don't like busting on them, and I'm not busting on them. I'm just saying, like, okay, Tannenwald had a pretty good one. I will say this, and this is at 1233, and um, so I'll give Jonathan credit for this because he basically says, okay, well, you're leaving all these guys off, and you're telling them there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance, but there's really not a lot of chances. There's not a lot of time coming up between Copa America and then the World Cup for them to prove themselves. So, and this is the way Greg answers it. Dude, does a player really have to play his way up? Others may play their way down inadvertently, but how much latitude does a player That's really have to play his way up? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the thing about it is, is situations change so quickly, you know, and it's not, you know, it's really not about, you know, permanent, conditions you know again you know i hate i just referenced this book but but you know reading this arson wenger book he's talking about a kid who who was you know was ready to leave the team at arsenal um because he didn't get selected to start in in this game against derby county hmm. and 10 minutes into the game he gets subbed on and he gets player of the match and he starts every game after that and, and he gets transferred to real madrid like yeah. that's how quickly Oh, they sold him to Real Madrid. That sounds smart. He's great. They sold him. Anyhow, well, never... that, that, was, that was the Arsenal way for a while there. I know. Yeah, I mean, I get what Greg's saying, that things can change. Look how quickly they changed for Aronson in, in a season and a half, right? Sure. But that's about what we have left, right? Um, and a lot of these guys, if they just stay stable, there's really not much room in the midfield for anybody else. Like Maloney's probably going to be left off if everybody is at least playing as well as they are now. I brought up, a, I brought up the idea a while back, possibility of including him as a center back option. In I don't think six. I don't think he can do that. It's, it's what he's played his entire life. Not for the last year, two years of his life. I'm sure, yes, I know. I'm, well, he basically plays as a center back, but yes, kind of. Yes, I get it. He's the protector of the CBs. I'm like riding a bike, you're just gonna jump right into it. Maybe I would not recommend that. I'd rather have somebody who's playing center back um, as their position. Uh, not saying Maloney couldn't do it. It's just a you know you'd have to get time for him to form that chemistry with whatever player he's going to be playing with back there. And there's not a whole lot of time to do that, to be frank. That's fine. Um, I'm just saying. I mean, outside of Miles, CCV, Richards, and Reem, I mean, that basically it means everybody else would be screwed. Because even McKenzie doesn't necessarily have a ton of. I mean, he's got some time that he's built up a chemistry. So we can even lump him in there. But it just basically means anybody else, anybody who's not a, who's a center back, can't be included. Prior to Copa, even the only guy who's got a lockdown center back spot, I believe, is Richards. Yeah, and probably because it's Greg Miles. And after that, it's probably for Greg a crapshoot every time he, you know, he has to pick some. Because if Reem never plays again, ever, for Fulham, and um, he's not picking Brooks, then yeah, it's a crapshoot between Trusty, McKenzie, and probably Zimmerman who gets back in the picture. I almost guarantee it. It's Greg after all. So yeah, I don't, yeah. Um, It'll be interesting to see how this evolves, but I don't think there's as much wiggle room except for the center back spot as people think. And I don't think there's a whole lot of wiggle room at striker either or at winger either. And by the way, I think you brought Sargent on to play winger as a backup. I don't think he's going to play center forward in this window. I think he'll come on for Polisic or he'll come on for Wea. Honestly, I think somehow Greg listened to us. And he brought him, or listen, or he'll split. he splits time up top with uh, with Pepe. I don't think so. I think Balogun's starting. Pepe's coming in for the last twenty minutes, and then um, Sergeant will come on for either Polistic to give him him a rest or Wea. 
I guarantee that's what's going to happen. I no, mean, I, I could prior, be wrong. Prior to his ankle injury, I mean, Sargent was Greg's number one striker going through the World Cup, and then he got the ankle injury, and that just fucked it all up. But uh, I, The I Balogun could... thing changes everything, though. And I think the relationship he had to heal with Pepe changes everything, too. So I definitely see Pepe hmm. coming in for Balogun. I could see it happening either way, but I I see I see Sergeant brought in as more of just depth, uh, maybe even the wingers. We don't have winger depth, quite frankly. No, we don't. So yeah, I mean that probably probably the the main reason why he's included. So I me, mean, you didn't bring Paredes. You didn't bring um, yeah, what, your de- your depth is Tillman and uh, Sergeant. And Tillman's not really. I mean, he can do it, but not really a winger. He great. He wasn't great there in the last game he played there. At least Sargent was forced to play winger at Werder Bremen and at Norwich so many goddamn times he's used to it at this point. Yeah. Um, so I think he'll be fine there. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you didn't bring Haji Wright, who's played winger most of the season for Coventry City until most recently. And uh, he could have filled in as well. So you didn't bring Paredes because Paredes is just not knocking out of the park. He's just not you know, he's not having that consistent impact like he did one game five games ago that I watched, you know, yeah. um, and that's what he needs to do. Or he'll lose his spot at Wolfsburg or they'll get somebody in the next window to replace him because he's been given a golden opportunity at Wolfsburg and he needs to grab the bull by the horns and take advantage of it. Don't pull him a Mihailovich. Don't disappear. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pepe has been pretty money for the national team. Hard to, it, I agree. It's tough. And yeah. it, when he does play, he's, he scores. And uh, yeah, he's had a little hard time scoring recently for PSV. But I mean, at the beginning through the middle of the season, every time he got on for 10 minutes, he scored a goal. Not every time, but you get the point. Contributed. Mm-hmm. I get it. It's garbage minutes. All right. But still, he's got to score. He's got to put it in the net. Mm-hmm. Um, and he did that consistently. So you can't poop on his parade just because they got some guy there named a young who's had a great season. It's hard to, to, although I expected there would be games against crappier teams that the young would be get a rest. But the problem is they are currently undefeated and on their way to breaking Ajax uh, record setting season of going yeah. undefeated and scoring the most points. So now that's in Bosch's mind, right? Bosch wants to win the record of the most points in a season in the Dutch league. So now we might not see Pepe. It's kind of a selfish he goal. Goes, he goes fucking us over, yeah. Although I think they could, they really ha- shouldn't have any problem beating the bottom three or four teams in Holland with Pepe starting at center forward. I don't think that would be an issue. But I think even if it, when you're up 2 0 at some point, 60 to you can go ahead and pull them at that point. Yeah, I think. And we've been, I don't think the, the drop off is going to be that drastic. And we've only seen that a handful of times where they're up 2 nothing and De Young still plays until the 75th. And you're like, come on, pull him in the 60th and give Pepe 30 freaking real minutes to play the game. That's <laughs> happened like once or twice, you know? Yeah. Is that the metric? Let's just play the pirate. Jamaica is an island. If that's the metric, what metric is he? What's the metric? What's the metric? Uh, Pepe scores when he plays for the national team. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Yeah, um. It's- Fairness, he uh, uh uh the pirate always scores against the island nations. Ergo, well, yeah, well, okay, Jamaica's a bigger island nation. Number one and number two, where it is um uh, Ferreira play again? Same place he was. Same place he was playing at when he was scoring against all his island nations. So let me ask you this: Has PSV tried to sign Ferreira? No. Napoli was going to though. No, they weren't, and even he's. <laughs> I know you can't say that as a joke, Brett, because some people who are new to the show are going to think you're serious. Yeah. Even Ferrer came out and said, no, Napoli never <laughs> approached me. The only one that we know who has actually put money on the table is a Russian club. That's yeah. it for Ferrer. Like he has not been a hot commodity. Nobody's been after his cock and balls to come over to Europe. Sorry. That's the truth. Whereas PS, uh, PSV is the best team in Holland. And Pepe happens to play for that team. And when he didn't, and he played for Groningen last season, which was the worst team in, in Holland. Still um, like 15 goals. He scored a butt load of goals. So I'm just saying there's no correlation to the size of the country, of an island country that Ferrer scores against. So, so I just want to make sure we're, that we make it clear. I'm making it clear. We're not using the same metrics. The metrics are different because – 
They play in different places. They've accomplished different things. And we've also seen a history of Ferreira choke, choke in the big games. MLS playoffs, from, right? MLS, MLS playoffs, World Cup. Yeah. Did he score in the uh, Gold Cup uh, quarter in uh, semi? I don't know. I think that's when Vasquez came in. So Vasquez scored against Jamaica in, uh, in the Gold Cup. Ferrer got his back-to-backs against the Tiny Nations, and then I think Vasquez scored again in the knockout stages. Dude, I'd take Vasquez 50, 365 days a year over Ferrer. So, okay. I agree. No, I agree with you on that, too, 100%. I'm, I'm, I'm done with Ferrer. I saw what he can do. I know what his ceiling is. I've seen it, and I'm done. I'm ready to move on. I, his name shouldn't even be brought up anymore. I don't know why it is. I don't know why it is. Outside of jokes, pirate jokes, I mean, it really shouldn't be brought up. Monterey are up 1-0 against Cincinnati right now. <coughs> oh, i got to turn that on. They are uh, – they're, they're uh, aggregates 2-0 going at aggreg- – it's halftime right now. Uh, what is that on? Not Paramount. Is Peacock? What is that? No, Fox. Fox Sports 1. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Boy, I'm a pile of contradiction here, aren't I? <laughs> all right, folks. I think that's all we got, right, Brett? Uh, yeah, no? BMR is happy we made it to a three-hour marker. So, Yeah, I know people are happy about that, but we're probably not as happy because we got to work <laughs> tomorrow. So, <laughs> yep. And now we, I got an hour to shower, relax, watch the end of this game, and then maybe go to bed. I won't get to bed before one. I never do. Some nights I barely sleep at all. Uh, anyhow, I want to thank everybody who showed up. We love you guys. We love this community. We love hanging out with you. We will have Jimmy Conrad on the show next Monday. That's going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. Having Jimmy on has always been fun. This will be a record-breaking. Well, is it a record-breaking? Is third time on the show? Plus, we had on the show three times tacked. Pete's only been here twice. So I think it's tacked. He's the only one who's been on the show three times. Sam's been on twice. Well, Diego. Um... Well, yeah, Diego. Diego, yeah, Diego's got a hint, yeah, down. But he's more of a hey, I want to come on the show. Okay, come on on the show, pop in. Yeah, I, 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 every now and then we get people asking, hey, when are you going to Diego on? I'm like, well, the invitation's we, always there. If, if, we he's got something, if he got something to talk about, man, we'll talk to him about it. Right. We we never like the. I think we planned Diego the first time, but the rest of the times he's just like, hey, I want my want to come on the show. We're like, okay, cool. He's got hey, I got something to talk about this. I'm like, yeah, cool. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Jimmy will break a record because most people have only been on twice, like Meg, Brian Shredder, uh, Shredder. Um, uh, please ask. Honest, yeah. Oh, I won't forget. To, I need to I, make that. If, if you guys were uh, fortunate enough to see the original thumbnail before I edited it, Jimmy's appearance on Ted Lasso makes it onto the thumbnail, and it will be there Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um Hey, so we're looking forward to that. I was really looking forward till today until I got home from work and I got the message that he wasn't going to be on today. I was like, damn, that sucks. I was so hyped to have Jimmy on. Um, so we'll have him on. We'll ask him the hard questions. We won't, we'll make him squirm a little, but in a good way. Uh, maybe we'll talk about some old times too. But you know what? Just keep this in mind as we um, close out the night that uh, it's okay. It is absolutely okay. Oh, shit. Another question. Hold on. Long Morn 16 five dollars. Thank you, Long Morn. Uh, appreciate that, man. Uh, or yeah, man. Uh, honest is very small, I can't see. Uh, honest question Dutch League or Championship in England, which is better? Um, I'd say the oh, this is really hard, but I'm gonna go with Championship. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, outside over, of over, overall, yes, I would say so too. Right, except for um, Feyenoord and PSV this season. Those were the only two teams that would play in the championship and have a legit chance at like finishing in the top five. Yeah, I mean, Ajax is usually there. Uh, Zed's usually up there. Yeah, not this season, though. Not this season, though. <laughs> They're all right, but it's not the Ajax we're used to, right? Um, the Ajax are like a couple in, of- indiv- Individual teams, I mean – I mean, uh, Holland's going to have it consistently because there's always going to be a consistent PSV, IX, etc. Whereas championships is always fl- uh, fluctuating. IX would have won the championship two years ago, as good as they were, but I not this. I think consistent outside of this previous outside of this current year. I think consistently. I think 
Ajax or PSV would consistently win championship. They'd be up the top, no doubt about it, fighting for it. Um, but then when you hit like the bottom seven teams, six teams in Holland, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, right? So that's when, you know, you're asking me to kind of compare apples to oranges. There are also 24 teams in the championship. It's a lot of teams. Do the t- teams at the very bottom of the championship stink? Yeah, some of them do. Like Rotherham is a horrible team. They are mm-hmm. rotten. Would they finish mid-table, though, in Holland? I think so. I think they would. Mid-table, probably. Um, but, yeah. I don't. That probably doesn't answer your question because it's not an easy black or white answer. It really it's isn't, yeah. Not a yes or no. Could a championship team make it to the knockouts of the Champions League? Um, Like, you know, Ajax. Like Ajax and PSV do? No, no, no. He said, uh, hold on. That was championship. Yeah, championship. An EFL team. Could make it make it, it to the knockout? Similar to how Ajax and PSV do, yes, is what he's asking. I mean, on a great freaking day. I mean, Leicester right now. Not the ones that's been playing the last seven games. No, I'd say the current championship teams, no. Probably not. That's why we're saying Ajax two years ago probably win the championship. PSV right now would be definitely win the championship. Yeah, definitely. Ajax not now, but Ajax last year and prior. Yes. I would say absolutely. Those two teams would guarantee. Feyenoord has been solid for the past, well, at least the past couple of years. But, I mean, that's as far as I've been following them. But they've always been up there. So, I, mean, Ford, I would say yeah. they'd probably be up there too, as far as consistently battling for uh, the automatic pr- promotion spot. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, weird stuff has happened in the champion uh, in the Champions League before, but I know. mean, yeah. and, and ultimately, I guess when you talk about the championship, as far as making the quarterfinals of the Champions League, you're looking at a handful of teams that are consistently bouncing back and forth between uh, uh, Premier League and uh, Championship, but even those teams wouldn't make it there. I would say, yeah, yeah. So, no, I, no, I don't think so. No, that's my that's my opinion on it. But the bottom of the Dutch league would finish at the bottom of the championship, right down there with Rotherham mm-hmm. and etc. Like I Utrecht, let's just use Utrecht as an example. Where would they finish out of twenty four teams in the championship? Probably like nineteenth, twenty second. They'd be at the bottom. They're not very good. Um, since he just so, scored off the kickoff, it's just such a big drop off, is I yeah. guess what we're saying. Yeah, um, near the bottom of Holland. I mean, yeah, All I right. mean, this is kind of what we're saying between the two, right? Al says the competitiveness in the championship is a factor, right? Yeah, it's brutal, it's definitely brutal. They were talking today, the Leeds guys were talking about, you know what, Aronson should have just stayed here this season because now we don't want him back because he's one of the guys that asked to leave so we don't ever want him back again this is joe and his friends and uh he's like had he stayed he might have grown a pair of balls he might have had to and that's what we said too we like just stay it's gonna be tough you'll toughen up you'll learn how to play in a really brutal league and then he goes to union berlin and he's a passenger so outside of one one or two games so sadly enough All right, again, thank you, everybody. We will be back Monday with Jimmy Conrad unless, you know, he suddenly cancels on us for whatever reason. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, And make sure you know that, uh, hey, it's totally cool to, um, what what did I say earlier? Slap that cheese? Slap that cheese if it's your stepsister. Stepsisters, totally cool, overage, consenting, slap that cheese. Slap it. All right, we'll be back on Monday. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your soccer. But she's a trap. She's an unsung novel. Turn a lap and get your whole world dazzled on the line. Or a phone call with or without. That hurt. (laughs) (laughs) Then what is this thing? Gio should never play for U.S. men's national team again because of the action of his parents. What an idiot!
Oh, what type of Muppet does this? It's Muppets. Absolute Muppets. I, 